perfect. Okay, welcome everyone to our council meeting tonight. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please, to open. Peter and Belinda. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker, be it resolved that we do call this regular meeting of council to order on Wednesday, February 9th, 2022 at, we will wait for six. At 6 p.m., those in favor? And that is carried. And I hand it over to Councillor Stefanik for our land acknowledgement, please. Just while Councillor Stefanik is getting ready, I just want to uh, let everyone know that's uh, on board tonight for our meeting. We do have quite a hefty agenda, so I will be moving us along um, and following our timelines. I apologize, my computer is not acting, my iPad is not acting well at all. That's all right, Drago. I had Jennifer look at it at the, today at four o'clock, help me a bit. Thank you. The Council Corporation of Township Hornpain would like to begin by respectfully acknowledging the land on which we gather here today is the Treaty 9, 1905 through 1906 territory, the traditional lands of indigenous peoples. As we work towards reconciliation, may we all live with respect on this land and live in the peace and friendship with all diverse peoples. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stefanik. So moving on to item number three, review and note to changes to the agenda. I don't believe there is any, and we have approval of the agenda. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Drago and Peter. Moved by Drago Stefanik, second by Peter Kistemaker. Be it resolved that council does hereby approve the agenda as presented. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, item number five is disclosure, disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof and declaration of conflict of interest. And council, you can provide that to me now or any time throughout the meeting. I do have one conflict of interest right now. Uh, just let me find the paper. And it's just for myself declaring a count, uh, conflict council. So I filled out the form dated today and it's for our open session and it's item number 15.4, colored copies and printing fees. And the following reason that I've stated is I have a complaint outstanding about bulk printing fees and could benefit from this decision financially. And I have signed it and submitted it with these, with these meeting documents. So let's carry on to approval of minute 6.1. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. John, Peter. Moved by John Peroff, second by Peter Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby adopt the minutes of the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, January 12th, 2022, as distributed. Any comments on the minutes? There being none, I put that to a vote, these minutes to a vote, those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. And our second set of minutes, 6.2, if I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Grego. Linda. Moved by Drago Stefanik, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby adopt the minutes of the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, January 26, 2022, as distributed. Any uh, discussion, comments on the minutes? Seeing none, I put them to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Uh, 
Item number seven, business arising from the minutes. I do have one point I just want to clarify with council is item 7.1, the um, Algoma District Municipal League resolution that we passed. At the meeting, I had said that I would um, write a letter to go along with this resolution. After a further thought, I thought that might not be the best interest of us and everyone, uh, considering I might be part of the per people that will be asked those questions and I didn't want to interfere with any of my own thoughts there wasn't part of the resolution either council that I had to write a letter letter so just so you know that it did go out today too thank you to Jennifer okay uh moving on now to item eight we do have um presentations today and I'd like to welcome some people to our council meeting and I was really excited to see this on uh, the agenda as I participated in the food cycler program so if I can invite Christina Zardo, Alex Heyman, and Albina Liebeck to our meeting. If you could turn your cameras on. Hi, Alex, nice to see you. Hello. Hey, Christina. Good evening. And Albina, where are you? But I will hand the floor off to, uh, I'm not sure who's the lead, who's going to lead the presentation. Hi, Albina. I'm not sure who will lead, Alex or Christina. So I'll lead. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor no and Council. I'm hoping that the organizer of the meeting could make uh, me a presenter so I can share a PowerPoint presentation. Definitely. Thank you. So is it warm where you are or cold or? It's warming up. It's, it's a, warming up? I think we're out of our cold snap that we've been in okay which so is excellent and I hear it's the same for you as well so that's yeah, fantastic yeah. well it's always the definition of warming up right what does warming up mean for you <laughs> for me it's like minus 13 14 that's warming up <laughs> well the beauty of working from home is that I haven't been outside today so I couldn't report back on that but <laughs> so it's, it's like uh, 70 or Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> something like that okay great I'll let you take it away there well, thank you again, Mayor and Council, for having us. My name is Christina Zardo, and I'm here with my colleague, Alex Heyman. And we'd like to do a short presentation today to do a program update on your Food Cycler pilot program and discuss some next steps. And so you already know about us, of course. We're a Canadian company, and we're 100% focused on providing food waste diversion solutions using our innovative technology called the Food Cycler. But we've had a really exciting year in 2021, and I'd like to highlight just a few things. Uh, one of them is that we were selected as a semi-finalist in Impact Canada's Food Waste Reduction Challenge, and the federal funding from this challenge um, must acknowledge that it was used in part to fund your pilot program, and we're thankful to that and to you for being an implementation partner. Uh, secondly, we were selected as uh, one of the 2021 Deloitte Fast 50 Clean Tech Award winners, and we're number one on Globa Mills, uh, Canada's top growing companies for 2021. And then the most exciting thing uh, I think that we'd like to highlight and acknowledge is that as of today, we're proud to say that we have 33 Canadian municipal partners who have signed on to a food cycler program. And when the township of Hornpain signed on last year, you were among just a small handful of municipalities to trial the solution. So we wanted to you know, acknowledge your willingness to be innovative uh, and come up with a solution to the longstanding problem that is food waste. So a recap of our pilot program. Uh, we did a pilot involving 36 households receiving a food cycler unit. The net cost of the township after federal subsidies and discounts was 5,100 plus HST. And we ran the program from August to October, 2021. And the way that it worked is that 36 households received a food cycler unit and they tracked their usage for a period of 12 weeks. And we were able to calculate diversion and the Participants responded to a survey at the end to give us some data and feedback about the program. And I would like to just acknowledge the 
program was managed by Albina, who did a fantastic job. We loved working with her and received some great feedback as well from participants with regards to her management of the program. And so thank you very much for that. We really appreciate it. So just a high level overview, we received 22 responses to our survey. And I'll just go through a few kind of high level results that we received as feedback. The average user used about four cycles per week. And this was equivalent to 210 kilograms per year per household of new diversion of food waste. We estimate the, that the annual potential here is closer to 300 as uh, households will use more food waste uh, in the summer months than maybe they did during the fall. We also noticed that the vast majority of users reported a significant reduction in their monthly garbage by one, two, or even more than three bags. 80% of participants said that using the food cycler, they were motivated to waste less food in the first place. 75% think that their neighbors, their friends and family would be interested in participating. Um, we asked for an overall user experience rating of the program and were given a very generous 4.8 out of five stars. 100% uh, of respondents said that they would recommend the food cycler to others. And 100% of respondents said that they will continue to use the food cycler after the pilot. So these were overwhelmingly positive results that we're very happy to see from your community. And here are some comments that were filled out in the survey. There was a space where people could add their general thoughts and feedback. So I'll just read a few of them. You know, it's great to have a tool to reduce household waste. We appreciate that the municipality is being innovative and piloting different solutions. If this, this was available to everyone, I believe everyone would try using it. Thank you for this opportunity. This made a distinct difference in amount. Uh, Albina provided a well-organized pilot project with up-to-date information for participants. Thank you. We hope this grows into something more. And then a little bit on the, you know, constructive or operational side, we'd like to see a drop-off location for collected waste, which I know was actually implemented at a certain point. And we would want more capacity was a common theme that we saw as well. So I'll pass it off to Alex at this point to provide you with a waste analysis of your current system and discuss what's next. Thanks, Christina. So based on the feedback received during the pilot, it being overall quite favorable, we worked with uh, staff, specifically Gail and Melissa, to understand a bit more about what current waste costs are right now in the municipality and how that compares to current market rates for different diversion projects. So working through the various costs of waste, we estimate that in the township of Warren Payne, it costs around $122 per ton to deal with late waste in the landfill. Looking at other types of diversion that exist, programs like recycling typically cost about one to $2 a stop, plus around $300 per ton in processing fees. And fees for recycling have gone up tremendously in the past few years, uh, mainly due to China no longer accepting a lot of this material. Similarly, if you look at curbside organics programs like we have in many big cities like Ottawa, you see a similar cost per stop, and then a cost per ton of around $300, very similar to recycling. We estimate with the food cycler, a typical user will divert anywhere from 250 to 300 kilograms per year uh, when you account for the increased summertime usage. So we put this out there to highlight that waste is expensive and unfortunately diverting waste can be quite expensive as well. Alex, your audio is sending a little off. I'm not sure if that's the same for everyone else. It is a bit off. It, it sounds like, uh, yeah, it's a bit off. It sounds like a a growl. A growl. <laughs> I was thinking something from a space movie. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for that. Is oh, it better now? Yeah, it's much better. You sound like a human. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, I do apologize for that. Of course, I have issues during the, the council meeting, uh, but I will do my best to continue. Um, so, looking at options for program expansion, we made a few assumptions. 
Uh, first of all, based on the pilot results, we think there'll be significant interest from others in the community to participate in a program like this, but do acknowledge that getting to 100% participation is, is simply not realistic. We've also seen comments that residents are less likely to participate in programs if there's ongoing out-of-pocket expenses for the food cycler and the filters required to run the device. And based on some conversations with Gail and Melissa, we believe that potential participation could be somewhere in the range of 200 to 300 households in the community, though we would of course need to verify this data. Some benefits of expanding the program would include less bears and other pests getting into our garbage, some potential efficiencies for waste collection, uh, the transfer station, even the landfill. And that's beyond just the cost savings. If there's less material that we need to handle, there will be some efficiencies gained. Uh, we think just having more awareness around waste diversion, particularly with food waste, will be overall quite positive. And there's significant potential for greenhouse gas diversion. Based on the calculations we ran using the diversion from the pilot project, we estimate that a project involving 200 to 300 households would be the equivalent of taking 175 to 260 cars off the road. So getting a household using the food cycler and diverting their organics is almost as good as taking an entire car off the road for a year, which is pretty exciting. And finally, um, it's another opportunity to keep highlighting the township of Hornpain as an environmental leader and innovator in Canada. Obviously, expanding uh, the program will come with some costs. And in the next slide, uh, I'll mention some grants we've identified that could be used to offset those costs. We estimate a cost of approximately $250 per unit in upfront capital costs plus a $55 per unit annual maintenance fee that would include a warranty for the entire period of the program to make sure all the units are always running and include the filter changes that residents are paying for out of pocket right now in the pilot program. And again, it goes back to the principle that if people are paying uh, out of pocket costs, they'll be more likely to stop using the unit. So if you put that all together for a 200 household project, the upfront cost would be about $50,000 plus a net operating cost each year of about $4,000 after taking into account the direct cost savings from reduced tonnage. And if we went up to a 300 household project, that would rise to $75,000 upfront plus a net $6,000 after the savings from reduced tonnage. Now, understanding this is a significant cost, we've identified some grants that we may be able to pursue in partnership with the township, such as FCM's Green Municipal Fund. Uh, OMAFRA has something called the Grassroots Growth Initiative, which provides funding. We've reapplied to the Impact Canada Food Waste Challenge to try and get more funding there. And NRC also has a program uh, called IRAP that may be able to provide uh, some offset to that expense. So overall, we'd, we'd like to receive feedback from council on whether program expansion is something you might want to consider and also get direction on whether uh, we should explore some of these grants or overall how council is feeling about this program. So we thank you very much for your time and welcome any questions or feedback. Thank you for the presentation. Well, and I do have to say that uh, I, I made a space for my food cycler right in my kitchen. And I had, um, uh, previous to the food cycler, had bought a compost from our waste uh, management committee and had it out by my garage, had the buckets on my counter. And in the year and a half that that system was in place, I think I got three buckets from my kitchen counter to my backyard composter. But I have, I don't know how many bins now of the good material to use and mix with my soil. So there it's an attest that it does work when it's right there in front of you and using it. So, and I've already used it in planting and everything within uh, just changing out and mixing it with soil. So I, I just wanted to give you that feedback that it was a huge success in my house. But anyway, I open up the floor to uh, council if they have any comments of what kind of um, how we'd like to move forward. 
with the program. Councilor Stefanik, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mary. Three excellent presentation. Both, uh, I agree 100%. I think we should be looking at expanding it. And obviously, if there are grants out there available, I would certainly, for one, would like to see it proceed. On the side note, I have been um, composting for the last 37 years since I'm in horn pain. I have my own composter in the back. I have a double property. And in wintertime, I compost from November to March. And I weigh my stuff. And from November to March, we're two, two people, it was 275 pounds plus the summertime. So, and I said that to council four or five, six years ago, I did make a comment about that. So I think it's a valuable program. And I think for one, we should proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stefanik. Any other comments from council? Councillor Kistemaker, go ahead. Belinda? I was involved in your project too. I really like that machine and I like what it does, putting everything back into the ground. So I'm for going forward on this project. I like to see what we can do with this. Awesome. Okay. John or Peter, do you have any comments? No, I think it's a great idea. I would like to move forward with it. I'm not participating in it at the time, but uh, well, I think it's about it. <laughs> Okay, great. So we do have a consensus there of council. I know that... Um, just for your benefit moving forward, that we have tried our best at uh, Horn Payne Town Council here to be fiscally responsible. So any kind of granting that we can get that would help offset those costs, of course. And then, and then it would, of course, have to come, depending on what the grants we would receive, come back to council for council approval at the budget time. And when would you expect it to come back if the grants were successful? I think the plan now that we have some direction is we would work in collaboration with Gail and Melissa and come back to you with a more detailed project plan of how this can move forward. Okay, great. Thank you, Alex. And um, Gail, did you have any comments at this time that you'd like to make on behalf of your staff and the project? Uh, first, again, I'd like to thank Albina for doing such a great job. I've heard nothing but good things and she was really good uh, to take it on independently and it didn't really uh, impact our workload, which was the original uh, concern. And uh, really, uh, I also didn't participate in the project, uh, although I wanted to, I just, I left spaces for other people and uh, I'm looking forward to participating in the future. Um, I'm just wondering if, if um, well, first of all, I wanted to, to point out that um, after we were provided with, and we spoke with you, Alex and Christina, uh, Melissa had forgotten to, uh, um, account for the resale of the filter. So our, our net cost is actually closer to for $4,000 instead of 5,100 from the pilot project, which is good news. Um, Cause we still, we have bought those filters up front and there's still a box of them downstairs that we'll resell. So that's good. Um, and the other thing I'm just wondering from council is, and I know we're, we're just kind of starting the budget uh, deliberations, and I, I don't have a resolution ready for tonight because I figured it would be tied in with the budget, but um, do you have a, a sort of a cap that you have in mind, which is, it's hard to do that, I guess, without seeing the budget, but, um, you know, we talked already that it's it's going to be a tight one this year, so um, it would just give us maybe a little bit of guidance, and not that you would really be committing yourselves to that number, but certainly we wouldn't go beyond that in our... Uh, investigations. Yeah, I'm not sure if any of us could really give you a number as of tonight, just because we haven't gone into the total budget deliberations. But I think if we got creative, because we have 36 and we had 22 um, responses to the current program, and it has such a high successful rating that it may, um, we may be able to get some participation costs covered by their actual participating in it. 
do you think that's a possibility where we can join, like where they have to pay to be in the next part of the program? Yeah, we discussed that, and I think we'll we'll get less partition part sorry participation that way because some people won't want to, and other people may not be able to afford to. But I think um, I think unless there's some really good grant monies found, that that that's the way we'll probably have to go. That's just a kind of a gut feeling. Yes, yeah, but and then too, I think when it's put out to the community, if we were to say get zero funding. And it is such a good program. And if they wanted to do it, I don't know if there would be a time where we could get commitments from people. Would that be a, a an avenue too, where we could work it? You had to pre-commit, pre-commit that you are going to pay and be part of the program. One name, Albina. Yeah, exactly. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. yeah, I did take a, a list of names. Like I said, I have 22 now, but I'm if I add up the other ones, I'm probably at 32. So I'm thinking we maybe could go to 50, but how about a, if we put it out there, if uh, somebody brings you a deposit, would that work? Like, so yeah. let's say the, the food cycler is worth $200, maybe ask for half down, like $100. And then you know that there's a commitment right? Because nobody yeah. wants to lose their, their money, right? So that, that might be a possibility. I'm just throwing it out there. That's a good but idea. I think, uh, if the, is it, are we looking to go to 200 or 300 or Alex and Christina, can we start with like 50? I think the challenge with some of the grants is we'll want to try and define as, as clear a project size as we can. And, and if a really good grant is available, uh, I would encourage the township to take advantage of it as much as possible and try and get as many homes covered. So it, it's tough to define a size without having gone through the granting process and seen what money we can find. Um, so I think it'll really depend <coughs> on what we can be successful with. Uh, and obviously if we're not successful with finding a grant, we probably want to have a, a lower program with residents paying at least uh, a significant portion of the cost. Okay, and then we would revisit it at that time, correct? Like we would revisit it and then the council could have a decision at that time. Yeah, now that we know uh, the township is interested in moving forward in some way, I, I think that can free up some resources for our team to go and look more closely at the grants and hopefully come back to council with a much more specific proposal that could, uh, I, I guess, be voted on in the future once we have more details. Okay. Thank you for that, Alex. Gail, did you have a further question? Go ahead. Just one thing. I just wondered if um, if you could allow Mina to speak, if she had something that she wished to speak to about her uh, report or the um, program itself. Yeah, for sure. If there's no other further comments from council, we can do that now for Alex or Christina. I'm not seeing any. The floor is yours, Albina. Okay. Um... Yeah, I just wanted to add, like, I, I know uh, people have been asking me in, uh, quite a bit about, you know, when's the next project going to be coming on board. So uh, because a lot of these names have already taken down for the next process, and I told them it wasn't a guaranteed process, of course, until it went through council, et cetera. But uh, I'm, I'm, you know, very positive and uh, that, you know, we're going to get a number of people to uh, jump on board on it. So I think it'll be all about the cost. The people that did, uh, the residents in our community that did go on the project the last time, they they understood what a food cycler really costs. You know, Googled it and Amazon and all that stuff. So they understood what the really cost was. And they knew they were getting a deal at $135. So most of them have, uh, you know, have contacted me throughout uh, or since at the end of it, at October, you know, talking about it. You know, they've had some issues and gone to a few people's homes, helped them out, fix, fix their machines and stuff like that. I didn't even know I could fix them, but I did. And uh, anyway, uh, I'm pretty sure that I would say I would, most of these people are all using their machines. And I know that uh, they've contacted me too because they couldn't remember where to get their filters. So I know because we have filters at the town hall that they did go to the town hall and purchase some. So I know that they're using them because you have to change your filters approximately every three months, right? So, um, yeah, I was, I was happy that everybody was still like, just didn't put their machine downstairs and uh, stick it on the shelf or whatever. But 
I mean, I use mine constantly, like sometimes still twice a day, depending on, you know, I wish one, I, I had one at the Legion because that thing would be running 24 seven. <laughs> but um, definitely for sure, I think it'd be uh, beneficial to our community. And I was, uh, I was happy to do the project for sure. Great, thank Thanks. you for that. No, we're glad you took it on. Are there any questions uh, or comments from council for Albina? Councillor Stefanik, go ahead. Yeah, Mayor. Thank you very much, Bina. And I agree with Bina's mm -hmm. previous comment a few minutes ago. I think with 50% down payment on the understanding it's refundable, the program does not continue, the person or persons get refunded their money back. I think that's a win-win situation, Bina. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stefanik. Okay, I'm not seeing any other comments. I think, um, Alex and Christina, you have some direction there and you can uh, work with Gail and Melissa and hopefully we can continue on. Is there any further questions before we end? Alex, did you want to speak or Christina? No, we thank you very much for your time and participating in this program and we look forward to hopefully uh, collaborating uh, with the Township of Hornpain and, and this council in, in a future program. So thank you very much. Yep, thank you very much, Mayor and Council and everyone else. Okay. Thank you so much. And I do want to highlight that I love the part where you uh, called out Horn Payne as um, innovative uh, uh, environmental innovative climate changers or something to that effect. I was going to bring it up back on the screen, but anyway, it was a shout out to the community. And anytime I see Horn Payne shine, I smile. So thank you for that. Okay, everyone, have a good night. Okay, Council, we're moving on with our agenda. Uh, we have a motion to accept the project manager's report for the food cycler program. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and Belinda. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker, be it resolved that the Council of the Town, oh, sorry, of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby acknowledge receipt of the Food Cycler Pilot Project Report as prepared by Albina Liebick, Casual Administrative Assistant and Food Cycler Pilot Project Manager. Those in favor? And that is carried, none opposed. Okay, moving on. We have the tender award for the Community Improvement Plan. Stacy, did you want to speak to your report before uh, council discussion? No, but now I will take any questions. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Council, do you have any questions for Stacy on the community improvement plan and the re recommended bid? Oh, go ahead, Councilor Perra. Um, you recommended. Uh, uh, what were they called? The one company. And I just wondered why you chose them over the lesser, the waste, the WSB Canada one. Uh, so um, the planning partners are going to do a lot more community engagement. The WSP um, wanted to do everything virtual, including the council meetings, all the public engagement. They didn't want to come to town at all. So that was one of the the main things right off the bat, since it's a community improvement plan, I think as much as we can have them in the community, the better. Um, their project plan, is, uh, the planning partner's project plan and the methodology is is really extensive. Um, and the uh, we compared other community improvement plans that these three companies did, and the planning partners uh, looked a lot better by far. Way more comprehensive for sure. Does that answer your question, Councillor or Parov? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions or comments for Stacy? Okay, I'm not seeing any. Um, we do have the recommendation to go with uh, the planning partnership, TPP and MDB Insights. Do I have, um, and that's what the resolution reads. Uh, Councillor Stefanik, go ahead. Are you moving it? Okay. And a seconder, please. Peter. 
Moved by Drago Stefanik, second by Peter Kistemaker. Where is the council, the corporation, the township of Hornpain issued a request for proposals RFP seeking the services of a consultant or team of consultants to undertake the creation of a community improvement plan CIP for the township of Hornpain. And where is the township received three proposal submissions as follows. Sierra Planning and Management SPM from Toronto, Ontario in the amount of $59,810 plus HST. The Planning Partnership TPP and MDB Insight from Toronto, Ontario in the amount of $38,785 plus HST. WSP Canada Incorporated, WSP from Ottawa, Ontario in the amount of $30,837.50 plus HST. And whereas members of the senior management team reviewed and compared the above proposals based on the criteria listed in the attached staff report and have identified the proposal from the planning partnership and MDB insights as the consultants who best understood the scope of the project and who will provide the best value to the municipality. Therefore, be it resolved that the council, the corporation, the township of Hornpain, upon the recommendation of the senior management team, does hereby accept the tender submission from the planning partnership HPP and MDB insights sites from Toronto, Ontario in the amount of $38,785 plus HST to undertake the creation of a new community improvement plan CIP and authorize the staff to move forward on this project. Be it further resolved that the funds will be taken from the planning and development reserve. And um, <clears throat> that's the motion as it reads. Those in favor? And that is carried. <clears throat> okay, moving on to eight point three. And we have the follow-up uh, open discussion and council deliberations of the 2022 water and sewer rates. And we have a further report from our treasurer and client service manager. Melissa, would you like to uh, speak to your report? Um, I no, I don't have anything further to add, but I'll take questions. Okay, great. Okay, I open up the floor for questions to Council on the report for Melissa. Councillor Peroff, go ahead. Oh, you're still muted, are you? Okay. Um, thanks for the report, a beautiful report with lots and lots of information in it. Now I noticed um, there's a couple of options there, one, two, three, four, and five. Um, I'm wondering, um, did we ever, would we ever consider somewhere between option number two and number three? Um, I kind of like option number three, because I don't want to see an increase to anybody's tax rate this year, but I don't want to lose money, sort of. So I'm wondering if we could put some money into the reserves to balance it to make it a zero. I, I'm with you, John. I just want to interject in here. I was um, very confused on how we, like I couldn't fit with just one option. I, I wasn't like, I want, I liked a little bit of every option. So it was kind of in the math there. So I'm with you on, I'm not exactly sure if I'm totally on guard on board with what you just said, but I'm on board with kind of dive, making a new option of, of all Melissa's options. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Like it, th those are just uh, options I put out there for council. Council can uh, make any options they decide. Okay, great. <laughs> any other further comments or questions right now? Councillor Stefanik, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mayor. One thing I know 100% for sure, unequivocally from my end, I do want do not want to see increased municipal taxes through water and water sewer. Unequivocally, no, 100%. That I'm sure of. The rest, I will wait. Everybody else says what their opinions are, but that one, I'm 100% sure. 
So you're saying you're hundred percent sure that you want no tax rate increase and, and, and for, no water? That's, that becomes, it, that becomes part of the water and sewer. We bill it back to the taxpayers. I do not want to see that through okay. the water and sewer. You, you know, from the arena usage, curling club usage to bill it back through the water and sewer to the taxpayers. Okay, so you're on board with what the water rate study said about us incorporating the facilities under their own billing? Is that what you're saying? I'm not exactly I'm sure. I'm saying no, I, they, there should be no charge back to the taxpayers for the water that's used, used at the recreation facility, just the opposite. Should be, a, look at number three, for example. Uh, number four, um, increase to municipal taxes, it says zero. Number five option, zero. At second last line, um, I'm here. Okay, so you're looking at that you want zero. Okay, I want to uh, point out, and I'll let Melissa clarify that the increase to municipal taxes, that is the increase that would go to the budget. But we we have discussion time for taxes, and we have created a levy stabilization reserve right. for uh, times just as this. Mm -hmm. And could it not be used at that time to? If we were to implement, say we were to implement just off the top of my head, I'm going to pick out option one, and then that portion would move over. We'd have to deal with that at budget time, and we could use our le uh, levy stabilization because we are making significant changes. Um, yeah, of course, uh, council could do that, but for lack of a better term, it's taking from Peter to pay Paul. So you're going to take it out of the levy of stabilization just to put it into the water and wastewater reserve. Right, but okay. But the township has been, like the taxes have been subsidizing the water. Yeah. Yes, so in my mind, that's like it's payback. Because the water, the water reserves would be for our future infrastructure of water. How difficult would it be? Like once, um, because there's certain parameters to take the money out of a water reserve. So if we were to put the money into a water reserve, we would be restricted to use that just for water yeah. or water maintenance. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, I just want to highlight that throughout the uh, water and wastewater rate study, it um, shows the increases that they're recommending each year. So to take from the levy stabilization rate from year one, that's not a s sustainable way to manage money moving forward. Right, right. And did we... Um... Do we have any adjustments on the rates? Like, say, if you're this year, we decide, okay, we're not going to go with the rate study at all. Does that affect now every year it moves in? Like, it moves? It'll affect the whole rate study that they did for us if we were not to implement it right away? Yes, that's correct. Like, I'm just I'm concerned that we'd be playing catch up and it'd be more difficult. Yeah, and actually, um, yeah, I agree with you, but I, I just want to further point out that I um, reached out to Watson and Associates today to ask them if they um, incorporated any of the asset management plan recommendations in the wastewater study, because we did provide them that information on the onset, and they um, she did come back to me and say that they did they did incorporate some of it, not all of it, and but to make it more manageable for the rate payer. Okay, so with that, with that information, am I right to surmise from that then if we weren't to move ahead with putting funds into reserves and following the rate study, we're actually further off because some of the capital improvements aren't included in there? I'll, I'll read you exactly what she said. Okay. She said, we, we did consider the asset management plan and the required works for both the water and wastewater. For wastewater, we included a provision starting in 2025 at 50K per year for any asset management works that may be required. On the water side, based on our discussions, we did not include any additional provisions for asset management works given the level of spending already included in the 10-year capital plan. Keep in mind that we did start to build up the water and wastewater reserve over the forecast period for future asset management works. So although we have not fully embraced the asset management's plan recommendation works to 
keep the rate increases at a reasonable level and keeping in mind the customer's ability to pay, we have included some provisions to help address some of the worst. Okay. Okay. Do we have any other questions from council? I do have a few more, but I don't wanna take up the time here. Councilor Paroff, go ahead. Yeah, I, thank you, Mayor. Um, Melissa, just out of curiosity, I, I know you said some of it is kind of taking from Peter and paying Paul and it's all out of the same pocket if whoever pays for the municipal buildings there. Is there a tax advantage either way, whether the money comes out of the wastewater or town pays it? You know, well, if, if, if the township's not contributing, like if we're not charging our own facilities, then um, all the rest of the town, the townspeople are subsidizing it through the water and wastewater rates. And it, if we do tra charge the facilities, then the rate payers are paying it from their property taxes. So either way, it's coming from the rate payers one way or another. It's just however way we want to implement bringing those facilities on board. Because right, the way we're doing it right now, it's it's not, it's just getting um, left out and it's being subsidized by the rate payers through the water and wastewater rates. Okay, thank you. You cleared that up for me, thanks. Thank you, John. Um, Melissa, just a further question on that, but for the to be in line with what the province has put in place, they want us to be a full cost recovery. Like that's where they want us to go, right? Like they yeah, that, and we can't like because I was I've said that we were full cost recovery and we're not. Like, yeah, and that rate study. Like we thought we were, but we're actually not. Yeah, that's correct. And that came uh, about through the SDR. Gail and I also thought that we were until it was brought to our attention that it's not because our municipal facilities were not included all this time. Right. So I think in the future, I'm concerned that in the future when we get go after granting and funding applications, if the province is moving to have municipalities have co full cost recovery water systems that I, I think it would be weightier on our application if we were already there and now we're like okay we have these improvements I that would be my take on that I'm not sure if Gail or Melissa you have comments to that it's entirely possible that that could happen uh, because they've done that now with asset management plans and um, you need to attach all your your documentation so i think i think really the more we can get on board the more security we'll have with with granting programs yeah yeah cuz then and then you can say right like if you're on board and they're telling you you need to be this way acting this way and you're doing it and then then i feel like you have more weight i know i would have i would be my voice would be a lot stronger sitting in a delegation with the Minister of Infrastructure knowing that, hey, we put all our ducks in a row and we need you to help us continue to do what you want us to do. Go ahead, Gail. And just I think we've seen in the last uh, couple of years with the success we've had with our funding uh, envelopes and the way we're approaching the delegations, they want to see that you're helping yourself before they you know, step in and, and help you. They want to see you trying to find solutions to your own problems. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I do have a couple of clarifications, um, Melissa. I just need for, um, just on your page two of your report, down at the bottom, um, you're talking about, uh, the first one is the long-term uh, loan payments. And if you don't have the answer tonight, that's fine. I can get it later. I just, it uh, piqued my interest. Our 73,000 that we're paying annually, is that consistent consistent every year? And does it, um, when does it end? Or when is the next step down? Uh, 
So um, the 73, 455 that we're paying this year, that includes our first uh, one payment for the DCLOR. So next year it'll be going up. It'll go up to 50,000, eh? Yeah, that's, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's why I just want to clarify that it would go up. And then and I'd have to look at the terms for the other one. I'm I know the the water um, the water facility was a 25 year program, and I'm not exactly sure when that was put into place. Scaling. Yeah, I thought it was a 30 year, and I thought it was done in. Oh. Uh, um, well, it was built in 2010, so 2040. I can't add to me. I think. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I, why I bring that up to council just and to staff to think about is that's where it comes into our long-term financial planning is laying out all those debt repayments, when we're reprieved of some, when we can get some more, and then what those big capital infrastructure projects are happening to ensure that we have our portion in the bank and that we have that room when it frees up. And when we look like the graphs that ahead that were placed in our in the report that was so well done it's showing us where these things can happen so i think we're on the right road i i just love this that we're on the right path to have that long-term planning in place so that we're not you know so councils in 10 years and eight years aren't you know putting out fires if we follow a plan um the other question i had melissa on that same page you talked about three different policies i just wanted to get um, it's the reserve fund policy and what? What's the name of that? And and do you have a plan for when you think these policies should be finally completed? Yeah, they're in my department work plan this year and they'll be completed this year. All three oh, of them, the reserve, reserve okay. and reserve fund policy, debt management policy and long-term financial plan. Oh, awesome, applause to you. Okay. <clears throat> okay, back to the discussion. I um for the last clarification I need in option two on your the five options laid out, the 2.5% in option two, is that a decrease or it's an increase still? Yeah, that's an increase. The option three is the only one that's a decrease. Okay, okay. Okay, my um, I'm gonna open up the floor again to council, but I I strongly feel that um, we need to follow. We paid good money to do a uh, the rate study, and I think we should try and implement it because if we don't implement it, I I think it would be one of those things that's going to get shelved, and and we're gonna put our head back in the sand. And I totally hear what John's saying about making a hybrid out of the choices. And I do respect Drago's um, that I wouldn't want to see an increase come out of our, our, to our taxes from the water. And I would be willing to either cover that through le the levy stabilization and set the course right on the, for the waste, uh, the water and wastewater. I'm willing to do that. Or there, that we pick the choice that, uh, minimizes tax increase but allows us to follow the weight uh the study so i open for discussion from council on that councillor stefanik go ahead yeah three mayor i was listening very carefully to you and i always respect your opinions i'm looking okay i, I i'm altering my mind ever so gently I'm look, looking at option number four, where it stays 3.11 increase and zero to municipal. I'm willing to look at increase to water and sewer at 2.11 and increase to the municipal taxes at 1.0% equals same amount to 3.11. I agree with you. If you had a report now, we should follow the report to a certain degree. We can't follow 100%, obviously, because the taxpayer, this community can't afford it. But I like the split. 211 water and sewer and 1.0. And then, as you say, Mayor, we cover it through other areas to cover the municipal portion from a tax, from our taxes. And I would agree with that. Thank you very much. Okay. 
Okay. I think we can, and we had decided to that um, at our last meeting that we would uh, allow that we adopt the final water and wastewater rates after our budget. So if we give clear direction tonight, I think uh, Melissa can come back with those as well. So I guess what I'd like to do then is as of right now, we do have a public uh, open discussion if council is done deliberating. Okay, we'll go to that portion. I'm gonna just give me one second uh, community members to change my screen view here. Did we have anyone um, request for the open discussion for this portion, Gail, do you know? Not if, that I'm aware of, no. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna put it out there right now. I don't see all the, I think we just have staff on now or? There's uh, one other person that is staff, but is not uh, here as staff. Oh, okay, sorry for that. Okay, so I open it up to the floor if for anyone that has any comments on um, this is your opportunity to have open discussion. Okay, I don't see any uh, microphones being unmuted. So I'm gonna go back to my active cameras. So if we, um, do we have consensus on incorporating the waste and uh, water and waste study re rates report? And if um, there is, do we want to put any money in reserves? I think, Melissa, that was the significant portion, right? If we were doing the reserve change, there was even further increases. Yeah, so that that was um, council's d uh, discussion and decision, informal decision when the water and wastewater rate study was presented that the increase that was um, put forth from the municipal facilities would go into reserve. So whether oh. council wants to proceed that way, it's totally up to you. <laughs> okay, okay, that's where that initially came from. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm hearing from Councillor Stefanik that he's um, okay with a, a small increase to water uh, with a 2.11% and a 1% transferring possibly a 1% increase to taxes because we still have to talk about that. So I put the, um, I open the floor to other council members and your thoughts on this. Councillor Peroff, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. If we, uh, following up on that thought from Councillor Drago, uh, Drago Stefanik there, if we pass on an increase to the property taxes, we haven't really talked about that yet this year. Yeah, that's right. So it doesn't necessarily mean it'll be a property tax increase because we can deal with it through the levy uh fund or like it's just that we know that there's going to be an increased amount going to the budget we just know that can, can, can somebody, i'm just wondering can somebody do some quick math on uh what that increase could possibly be like a dollar amount for a one percent increase is it yeah. somewhere around? So for for um, if we drop the uh, taxes to two point one percent on the water sewer, uh, we're not dropping the taxes. It would be the the rate increase to the water and sure. sewer would be two point eleven. Yeah, that's that, that's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. So quick math. I'm going to say it's about point zero nine. Melissa, am I close? <laughs> I'm actually trying to figure it out from, um, not from option four, but rather option two. Um, the option two, the 
amount is 2.54 that would cover the expenses and the at the bottom the 2.8 is directly related to the water and sewer transfers so two point <laughs> do, you, do you see what i'm saying there yeah. So yeah, if, if you went 2.54, that would that would probably be the best option to go. And then um, if you wanted to put less money into the municipal or into the reserve, then the increase to the municipal taxes would decrease. Okay, so let me clarify that. So if we're looking <laughs> uh, council on uh, page three, which is kind of, is interesting because option two is the option that Melissa uh showed us like led us to for the report if we wanted to follow the water and waste uh rate study report so we could discuss further at budget time the increase to municipal taxes and decide what we want to do with those uh transfers of reserves so we so melissa can i just say it this way that we could go with the 2.5 percent increase that follows along option two and then at budget deliberations, we could decide whether we want to take the 2.8% increase out of the levy stabilization, or we could decide that we want to not do the reserves, the not the transfers. Yes, that's correct. Okay, I think that's a good, I think that's a good uh, moving forward. And that gives you a workable workable options, right, Melissa? Like it's not gonna create a, a lot more work because these options are already figured out for you? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay, I put that out there for the rest of council that we um, go with option two and then we allow that uh, during council deliberations, we'll decide how we will deal with that 2.8% either increase or zero. It'll go to zero depending what we talk about at that time. Councillor Stefanik, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mary. Thank you, Melissa. So basically, the annual increase in dollars and cents would be forty-four dollars and four cents, correct, for twenty twenty-two. Yes, that's correct. correct. I just want to be clear on that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Oh, go ahead, Melissa. I just um, if council is done deliberating on the rates, I just have some uh, clarification points for the bylaw. So it's some direction from council. Okay, sure. So in the waste, in the, in the study rate, um, they suggested that we apply a 50% re vacancy rebate, rebate to people that have their, dis their water disconnected when they're gone away and such. Uh, right now, um, we don't charge them at all. We charge them $30 re uh, disconnection and then $30 reconnection and then they don't get billed at all. But uh, during their rate, um, they said that, that it's recognized that the township still incurs costs even though there's no usage. So they're recommending the 50% vacancy discount. So I'm wondering um, where council stands with that decision. Yes, I remember that. Thank you for bringing that up, Melissa. And is that, so you're going to need that to incorporate in the bylaw, So, and we're going to look at this bylaw being formulated by the end of March now, correct? Okay. Um, what were the other questions? Do you want to give them to us tonight, and then Council can think on them, and we can give you an answer at our next meeting? Okay, the only um, other thing that I had was for the schedule in re in regards to the hotel. So I know um, we're not going to be putting, we're not going to be charging the hotel this year, I don't imagine, depending on when it's being built. But um, in the in the waste, uh, water and waste rate study, they had put, set it at 10 um, SD, SDEs, and when looking back on it, um, with the multi-residential -re agreement, which has 30 units, they pay 0.75 of an STD, and the other multi-residential rate has um, 35 units, so they pay 0.5 an SDD per room. So I'm thinking that it's not very balanced for a 10, 10 
an SDD for them to be char being charged at SDD at 10 for a 44 room commercial place as opposed to um, these guys, the multi residential agreements paying a lot more than what it's proposed for the hotel. So I'm wondering if council would consider putting um, setting a rate for a per room SDD instead of um, an all encompassing hotel. Because we don't know what the future holds. Maybe the hotel's not even going to have 44 rooms. Maybe someone else is going to build one that has three rooms. So it, there's there's no equal to just say an over encompassing 10 SDDs for a hotel. Okay. Um, I think we are going to need some time to consider this. And um, the information you just gave us, could we have that put together on your next report? And then we'll yeah, make absolutely. You. Does that work? And then you can yeah, lay out sure. what you think your recommendation is and why okay. you see, like, I, I love your thoughts on this of why you see this could be a problem in the future. Is that, that work? And then that way we can get you a firm decision. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Council, do you have any other questions or um, comments on that? So Melissa has direction on what she needs to report on. No, I'm not seeing any. Okay, I just, I wanna reiterate again that, um, so just so Melissa has that, we have uh, solidified that, we're gonna go with option number two for the increase. And she'll bring that back to us. And then again, the 2.8% that could possibly go to tax increase, we will deal with that at budgets with the different avenues we have. Is that where we're at council? I'm seeing yeses. Yes, yes. Okay, that seems like consensus to me. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Melissa, for your report. Well done. Thank okay, you. let's move on. Okay, I need to, uh, oh, sorry. I do have a, to acknowledge receipt of the report. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Grego and Belinda. Moved by Drago Stefanik, second by Belinda Kistemaker, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain this year by acknowledged receipt of the 2022 Water and Wastewater Rates Report as prepared by Melissa Chenier, Client Service Manager Treasurer. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, so moving on to manager's reports, if I can get a mover and a seconder, please. John, Peter. Moved by John Peroff, second by Peter Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornbane is hereby acknowledge receipt of the manager's reports provided at the regular meeting of council held on Wednesday, February 9th, uh, 2022. So I open the floor to our CAO. Gail, would you like to uh, speak to your report or add anything to your report before I open up for questions or comment? Thank you so much. I do have a couple of things to add. Uh, I neglected to, to uh, put in there that the application to FedNOR for the extension of the EDO um, funding was submitted. And I just wanted to bring up that there was an opportunity for uh, a pilot project with for to do with uh, electronic building permits. Uh, it was put together by AMO and MPAC. And um, I didn't put it on the agenda because uh, Kevin Saber and our chief building official official did reach out to all the communities he looks after and saying that he thought it would be a good thing to, to do and we're looking for feedback and from what I can see I'm the only one that responded unless they responded individually and um, I had just said yes we would be interested uh, to look into it but we needed to know the cost because there are some costs associated and I never heard back so that's why I'm thinking nobody else responded to him. So <clears throat> I can't remember what the date is, the deadline is for that, but um, I'll follow up with him just to see if anyone else was interested because we do have another meeting, you know, seeing as we have all these budget and water and sewer meetings, it's easy to throw something little like that on there. So um, I just wanted to let you know that it's, it didn't get overlooked. I was just waiting for more information. Okay, great. Thank you for that, Gail. Okay, any questions or comments for Gail? 
Councilor Peroff, go ahead. Sorry about that. Um, Gail, um, in your report, you had talked about down here where it says uh, the broadband and that we're not supposed, to, it sounds like we're not supposed to take the lead on that and let the government just go and do their thing and give it to us or that's almost a message I'm getting. Yeah, they didn't say you can't take the lead on it. It just says, I had asked, are we expected to take the lead on it? Uh, and they said all they're expecting, um, and I, I never did get my uh, extra or responses to the extra questions that I had sent them, but um, my take on it, and I think all of our takes on it that were in there was we're expected to provide support uh, with background data and um, um, help with permits and applications. So it's not saying that you, you can't do it or you shouldn't do it, but because we kind of floundered around, you know, with time and, and money, um, not really getting anywhere in the end. I wanted to know, is it our, like, is it firmly our responsibility? Do we have to take this by the reins and, and I'm sorry, there's a train going by, I got my window open, but take the take it by the reins and do this ourselves or is somebody gonna come in and sort of, you know, guide us guide us through it and, and you know, if they're taking care of the RFP um, uh, process and um, they've delegated, not delegated, but allocated the different areas that need to be covered, then obviously, you know, we're going to have to be involved when, when, when the time comes to choose what we want for our community. But I think that initial um, getting things off the ground is not, it's not reliant on us to do that. Okay. Does that answer your question, John? Well, sort of. I don't know if I like the answer, but I guess it does answer it. Here I was all hopeful. I'm like, finally, some direction. <laughs> Any other questions or comments, John? No, that was all I had for uh, for Gail. Thanks. Okay, I think I saw Councillor Stefan. Stand up, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Three Mayor. Uh, solid report, Gail. Uh, I really, and I, I especially agree. Unfortunately, I agree with you. Uh, third last paragraph, which you're saying to budget. Um, for further discussion, third last paragraph, it's the reality of life. And um, it's sad to see that, but I think we should be looking at that uh, very closely for the budget figure. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stefanik. Any other comments or questions? I just wanted to uh, draw to Council's attention that um, the first paragraph on page two of Gail's report, it talks about um, a study that the staff unexpectedly came across a funding program that funds floodplain risk studies at 100%. And this is pretty interesting. Gail uh, actually pointed it out to me, but after reading her report, I was thinking, you know, if we wouldn't have done the community, the official plan and the zoning bylaw, would flood risk floodplain risk studies even be on the staff's radar, you know? So I, I just took it at a, as a win-win that when you're planning, you know what to look for. Like things start jumping out like, oh, we need that to fill that. We need that to fill that. So it's a testament to say like, yeah, we didn't even know where the money was gonna come from. So I'm hopeful we are successful. I'm glad that the staff caught that. And, uh, but I just wanted to point that part out. Um, I do uh, agree, Gail, with your decision about the summer experience program. I totally, totally agree that there's so much going on that hiring a student right now, that it would just add too much weight. And I, I am concerned with all the big projects going on that um, I, I'm in complete agreement with that. So hats off to you there for, I know it was a tough decision. Um, I wanted to let council know, Gail talked about the Roma conference and the delegation with uh, the Minister of Infrastructure, Kinga Serma, and I've been invited to, uh, for a consultation that the ministry is gonna contact me for upcoming consultation sessions. So I'm not sure if this is all across every municipality, every mayor, I'm not sure, but it was addressed to me and I have accepted. I don't know when that'll be. Um, 
and I agree with what Councillor Stefanik had said. It, uh, it's a delicate situation, but I think um, we'd rather want to plan ahead than be in a in a worse situation and be reactive planning at something um, at that time in a family's life. So, and the last thing I did want to highlight is what Gail has put in her report for our community and uh, experiencing the involving cases of COVID-19. So that she'd like to send wishes of well, uh, well wishes to those that are ill and have symptoms or have symptoms and hope that our community, community gets through this time relatively unscathed. I totally agree with Gail on that. And, uh, and I um, did a live on Monday and again yesterday, just imploring people to follow the protocols and ensure that we work together to get our community through this very fragile time. So those are my comments on Gail's report. Gail, go ahead. I just wondered, is the consultation on broadband with the Minister of Infrastructure? Or do you, is it uh, just infrastructure in general, or do oh, you know? No, I do know, I'm sorry. I, I um, It's on the Ontario Community Infrastructure Redesign and Asset Management Planning Program. Yeah. Sorry, I, I neglected, thanks for asking me. Okay, if there's no other comments or questions, we'll move on then. Thank you, Gail. We're moving on to Melissa Chenier, Client Service Manager, Treasurer's Report. Melissa, do you have any questions or additions to your report? Not questions, comments or additions to your report before we open up the floor to questions? Yeah, I just want to add, uh, since I wrote my report, we did uh, finish reconciling the OMERS pension payments for 2021 and the T4s have been distributed. Awesome, thank you. Okay, I open up the floor for questions or comments. I do have one question, Melissa. Is 32 tax arrear letters, is that high or like, are we keeping a track of each year where we're at with that? I felt like that was high this year. Yeah, it is uh, quite high this year. There was no movement on it last year because of COVID. That's why. So it's everything's been accumulating for all this time. So now we're uh, getting back in the saddle and putting the <laughs> going on strong. Okay, is that what I have that highlighted actually for the benefit <laughs> of the community? I'm highlighting it here. It's tax collection efforts will be redoubled. Is that what you mean? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I'm going to um, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I'm in arrears. I'm one of these people that get this letter. If I call you, uh, what are my options? Yeah, I um, my the tax collection bylaw authorizing authorizes me to make set up a payment plan that um, repays your second year of taxes within six months. Okay, so your second year of taxes within six months, and then after that, you can start paying your other taxes, or yet try and pay both, or or you can go with a payment plan for that. Yeah, well, that's the only payment plan that I'm authorized to uh, establish, or or of course anybody can pay it all off at one shot if they want to. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm sure that's why they're they're not paying, right? They're just hoarding all the tax. <laughs> Okay, but I just I want to put it out there that the community can reach out to you and make a plan and that uh, yeah. we'll put that out. Go ahead, Gail. I just wanted to clarify in case it didn't come through that they, the tax registration pro process was put on hold by the province uh, and nobody was allowed. Municipalities weren't allowed to do to follow up with tax registrations. Uh, I don't know if it was a, a year and a half, Melissa. I'm not sure what the length of the time was, but um, it just, she was forced not to do that. So just so that's clear. Okay, yes, yes. So we are, I just, I thought it was high. So it is high because we didn't do it last year. So people basically, I guess, kind of got away with it a little bit, but now we're reining it in. Okay, okay. And um, what else was there? Uh, oh, I just wanted to point out to Councillor Stefanik as the deputy mayor. Um, that there is a resolution on the table tonight for May the 30th for the audited financial statements being presented to council. And I just want you to be aware I'll be on vacation then. Okay. Any other further questions or comments? 
Okay, I'm not seeing any. Let's move on then. Thank you, Melissa, for your report. Uh, public manager's report, Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne, nice to see you. Oh. Do you have any additions or, to your report before I open up the floor for comments or questions? Uh, yes, the uh, arena has recommenced its uh, programming and uh, pub, uh, minor hockey is back as, as of Monday. And the three water leaks have all been repaired and possibly a new one's under investigation right now. Oh, yay. Okay. Thank you for that. Any other comments or questions from Council for our Public Works Manager? Councillor Stefanik, go ahead. Yeah, to you, Mayor. The condenser is leaking, you mentioned, uh, Duane. Is it the piping inside that it's some piping has cracked? Um, the circulation piping, that's why it's leaking? Uh, no, it's it's not leaking. It uh, was just uh, condensation causes the freeze up. It was temperature fluctuations yeah. caused the ice buildup. So it's a minor irritation then. Okay, thank you. Correct. I have a follow-up question to that. That was my question. It had it had that happened before with the buildup? Um, and is there a way that we can monitor it? Because I would be, I'm glad that uh, the lead hand found it. That's great. Applaud that. But um, to assist the lead hand, if it was to happen again? The regular plant checks. There was no jeopardy of losing the ice or anything. It's just regular plant checks to make sure that it's running properly. Okay. So would it fall in, in line? Okay, great. Any other questions or comments from council? I just want to highlight in your report uh, where you talk about um, people power at the public works and that operators have been really stepping up to pick up the slack. And I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of mayor and council. I know that uh, this time has been difficult for everyone trying to manage families and home life and health and all of that. And I just want to say thank you. I'll make sure it gets back to them. Okay. Okay, if there's no other further comments or questions, we can continue on. Thank you, Duane. You're welcome. Okay, moving on to our Economic Development Officer, Stacey uh, Randell. Do you have any um, additions to your report? I don't, but I'll take questions if you have any. Okay, great, thank you. Questions or comments for... Uh, Stacy, I'm not seeing any. Okay. So I know um, I see winter active uh, activities on your report, and I I know they're virtual from uh, Gail's report. And I um, reluctantly put it out there that if there is some activity that you could utilize me on the last weekend, you're welcome to come up with something creative to, um, and I dedicate myself that this could possibly, we have an election year and this could possibly be my last year's mayor. So you can torture me a bit, Stacey, if you'd like. And uh, I don't have any further questions or comments. And I see uh, Councillor Stefanik smirking. You don't give her any ideas. Um, <laughs> I think we should have, we should have a dunk tank at the town center field. In the winter? <laughs> Pretty yeah. okay, With hot it's, water. I'll give you hot water. No problem. It's jacuzzi style. I'm all in. <laughs> I think Dwayne should turn on his camera because he's the sneaky one of the bunch. Oh, <laughs> The only, the one parameter I do put on, I've already shaved my head once. I don't want to shave my head again, okay? We're, we're not, we're going to keep my body intact. <laughs> okay. If there's no further comments or questions then for Stacy, then we'll move on. Thank you, Stacy, for your report. And that's it for manager's report. So I'll put um, the acknowledgement receipt motion to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, moving on to action items. 
We have 10.1, the Municipal Modernization Program. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Drago and Peter. Moved by Drago Stefanik, second by Peter Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council, the Corporation, the Township of Hornpain this year by authorize the client service manager, treasurer, to issue a request for proposals for the completion of a comprehensive user fee study for the Township of Hornpain. Be it resolved that the cost of this study will be covered by intake three of the Municipal Modernization Program. Those in favour? And that is carried. It was nice to see that we were successful in those funds. Okay, moving on to the next is 10.2. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. John and Belinda. Moved by John Peroff, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Just give me a second. <clears throat> Whereas on January 17th, 2022, Council received correspondence from the Northwestern Ontario Municipal Association, NOMA requesting support for the expansion of the Northern Ontario School of Medicine, NOSM, capacity to meet the needs of Northern Ontario. And whereas one in eight Northern residents do not have access to a family doctor and many must travel long distances to access healthcare services, representing a failure of healthcare in Northern Ontario. And whereas, although highly successful at providing doctors for Northern Ontario, NOSM has fewer healthcare professional spots than the rest of Ontario medical schools, and it would take a minimum five NOSM graduate, graduating class at 64 physicians per year to address the current shortage. And whereas communities in Northern Ontario require access to equitable health care and especially underserved rural, Indigenous and Francophone communities. And whereas the expansion of physician training at NOSM is a way to encourage more physicians to come and work in Northern communities and to encourage newly trained physicians and specialist, specialist physicians to stay and contribute to the health care crisis in the North. And whereas Council through resolution number 2021-152 dated May 12, 2021, supported NOMA's strong opposition to dissolving the partnership between NOSM and Lakehead University, illustrating a sheer importance of this entity to Northern healthcare. And whereas NOMA continues to advocate for the health for the health well-being of our Northern municipalities regarding the physician shortage crisis. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of Corporation, the Township of Horn Payne, does hereby support NOMA's request that the Government of Ontario and the Ontario Medical Association immediately expand NOSM's capacity to meet the needs of Northern Ontario and add MD positions, residency positions, PGY 1, 3, and 4, and clinical teaching funding to the Northern Ontario Academic Medicine Association. Be it further resolved that this resolution be forwarded to the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Jill Dunlop, Minister of Colleges and Universities, the Honourable Christine Elliott, Minister of Health, Michael Mantha, MPP Algoma Manitoulin, the leaders of the opposition parties, the Ontario Medical Association, Northern Ontario School of Medicine, Northern Ontario Academic Medicine, Medicine Association, Association of Municipalities of Ontario, and the Federation of Northern Ontario municipalities with a copy of the Northern Ontario with a copy to the Northern Ontario Municipal Association. Any comments on the motion or discussion? There being none, I put it to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, moving on to 10.3. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Belinda. And Peter. Oh. Moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by Peter Kistemaker. Whereas municipal governments provide essential services to the residents and businesses in their communities, and whereas the, the ability for the municipality to provide important public services is negatively impacted by exponentially rising insurance costs. And whereas one significant driver of in rising insurance costs is joint and several liability, which assigns disproportionate liability to municipalities for incidents relative to their responsibility for them. 
And whereas this practice is not sustainable for municipalities nor the taxpayer, who must ultimately pay these costs? And whereas according to local government priorities for the 2022 provincial election from the Association of Municipal Managers, Clerks and Treasurers of Ontario, AMCTO, reforming joint and several liability could save the municipal sector $27 million in insurance costs and ensure that taxpayer money is being spent in financially strapped areas. And whereas the Government of Ontario has the authority and responsibility for the legal framework of joint and several liability, and whereas the Premier of Ontario committed to review the issue in 2018 with a view to helping municipal governments manage their risks and costs. And whereas the Association of Municipal Municipalities of Ontario, on behalf of municipal governments, has provided recommendations to the attached document titled Towards a Reasonable Balance Addressing Growing Municipal Liability and Insurance Costs to Align Municipal Liability with the Proportionate Responsibility for Incidents and Capping Awards. Now, therefore, be it resolved that in addition to the support provided through resolution number 2021-017 dated January 20th, 2021 attached, the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby reiterate its support of AMO's recommendations and hereby calls on the Attorney General of Ontario to work with the municipal governments to put forward a plan of action to address joint and several liability before the end of the government's current term so that municipalities can continue to high offer high quality services to their community. Any discussion on the motion? <clears throat> I have one, uh, one uh, just a small discussion point, is right at the end of the motion we are talking about, I I'm concerned that we're not gonna get any movement and we won't be able to use this motion again for more weight in the future because we're putting a timeline the end of this current uh, government's current term, which could actually be in June. And um, if we were to reword that last sentence, we could actually reuse this resolution again. This, this is a very important issue that does need to be addressed. And we ought to keep fighting it because we, when um, I've done several different webinars and information sessions on this issue and basically lots of times the municipality ends up putting the whole bill in in cases so that's my only concern is if we can um i that's what i'm i refer to you gail on a recommendation you know what just just take that out just before the end of the government's current term just take that just take cross that out i okay. think it would work Okay, yeah. Okay, government's put to a forward plan address. Okay, so before the end. Before the end of the government's current term, just cross that out and that'll be good. And then we can just okay. fix that up for you tomorrow. If uh, if council is good with that, so I'll reread that portion. Um, I'll go from Attorney General of Ontario to work with municipal governments to put forward a plan of action to address joint and several liability so that municipalities can continue to offer high quality services to their community. Does that sound good to council? And then this, this resolution will be able to be forwarded again. Okay, okay. Oh, those in favor? <laughs> I'm just talking to myself here. Uh, okay. Okay, moving on to 10.4. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Drago. And Peter. Okay, moved by Drago Stefanik, second by Peter Kistemaker. Whereas the federal government under Transport Canada has jurisdiction in respect of transport by railways to which part three of the Canada Transportation Act applies, subsection 2.2 of the Railway Safety Act, RSA. Whereas maintaining grade crossing safety is a complex multi-jurisdictional challenge and whereas under the Canadian Transport Commission, now the Canadian Transport Agency, legislative orders dating back to the 1970s, road authorities such as municipalities across Canada were made responsible for covering 50% of new crossings as well as railway crossing upgrades and maintenances. 
maintenance. And whereas this legislation was put in place when railways such as CN Rail and CP Rail were publicly owned entities, and whereas according to the Canadian Transport Agency, the costs of construction and maintenance of a basic grade separation are not included, are not to include the costs that would otherwise be incurred by the railway company or the road authority if the crossing did not exist. And whereas these railways are no longer crown corporations, but were privatized in 1995 and 2001 respectively, becoming for-profit corporations with listings on the Toronto Stock Exchange. And whereas a net profit margin for a large corporation of 5% is considered low, 10% considered average, and 20% considered high. And whereas the average net profit margin for CN and CP Rail are um, I'm just going to take out the is there, are 31.87% and 32.25% over the last five years. And whereas private, uh, sorry, there's microtrends.net in there. And whereas private for property for profit companies should not be reliant on public funds for maintenance and upgrades to their infrastructure. Their fridge should not be subsidized by municipal rate players. And whereas municipalities, particularly small rural and northern municipalities, have small and limited budgets and struggle to cover internal capital expenditures. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Horn Payne does hereby request that the Federation of the Canadian municipalities FCM investigate further and consider forming a task force to find a better solution for Canadian municipalities that could include but not limited to the following tasks. Consult with all Canadian municipalities with railways running through their communities and with the general public. Conduct a review and create solutions to the outdated legislation requiring municipalities to cover all high percentage of railway crossing maintenance and construction or construction. Create a process under which road authorities have more input and control over capital work and expenses with their budgetary control. Provide a report to Transport Canada and to the affected municipalities outlining their recommendations. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, the Honourable Omar al -Grafra, Minister, Federal Minister of Transport, Transport Canada, the Canadian Transport Agency, Carol Hughes, MP, Algoma Manitoulin Capscasing, Premier, uh, it should be Premier Doug Ford, sorry, and the Ontario Ministry of Transportation Minister, Caroline Mulrooney, the Federation of Northern Ontario Municipalities, the Northwestern Ontario Municipal Association, and the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. Just for Council's recognition, I have inserted the Premier's name and the Minister of Transportation's name there. Any comments or questions on the... Go ahead, Councillor Spanik. Yeah, to the Mayor. It baffles my mind when many municipalities across Canada are paying 50% of the operation cost, maintenance cost, to a private company. It just baffles me. So I think this resolution is very, very important. Hopefully there'll be some movement on because this was tried before it, it failed. And I'm really hoping that that's the case this time. Thank you. Yes, and I want to applaud Gail on putting together this resolution. As you know, this came out of just a discussion and over uh, past council meetings and that sort of thing. But it really highlights what needs to be done. And I think if we all put our um, the funds, the dollar amounts that each of us are spending across now that's going to start giving some substantial weight that this legislation needs to be looked at. So any further comments or questions on the motion? Okay, I'll put it to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, moving on to 10.5. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Belinda and Peter. Moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by Peter Kistemaker. Whereas on February 3rd, 2022, Council received correspondence from Guy Bourguin, MPP Meshkegawak James Bay requesting support for Bill 59, Making Northern Ontario Highway Safer Act 2021. And whereas according to Mr. Bourguin, too many Northern Ontario 
Northern Ontarians have lost their lives or suffered life-altering injuries driving on poorly maintained roads in the winter. And whereas the highways 11 and 17 corridor, the only point of access to many communities in the region is reoccurrently closed due to poor weather conditions, accidents, and below par road maintenance. And whereas the communities in Northern Ontario require safe, well-maintained highways, in order to access vital resources and services. And whereas Bill 59 seeks to reduce the number of winter closures in Northern Ontario by e elevating the winter maintenance standards for the Trans-Canada Corridor highways by amending the Public Transportation and Highway Improvement Act 1990, setting out a classification system for Ontario highways consisting of five classes of highways, classifying Highway 11 and 17 at par with all 400 series highways in the QEW highway, and ensuring the strictest requirements for snow removal, which require that the pavement be bare of snow within eight hours of the end of the snowfall. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council, the Corporation, the Township of Horn Payne does hereby support Bill 59, making Northern Ontario Highways Safer Act 2021, introduced by Guy Bourguin, MPP Meshkegawak James Bay. Be it further resolved that this resolution be forwarded to the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Carol, Caroline Mulroney, Minister of Transportation, Michael Mantha, MPP Algoma Manitoulin, and the Northwestern Ontario Municipal Association, NOMA, and the Northeast Ontario Municipal Association, NEOMA, the Federation of Northern Ontario Municipalities, FENOM, with a copy to Guy Bourget, MPP Mishkegawa, James Bay. Any comments or discussion on the motion? Okay, well, I have several. <laughs> I have a lot of concern about this. I actually reached out to uh, Joanne Barrell, and you'll notice in our correspondence information only package that the Ontario government created a northern, they launched a northern transportation task force. And last year, they did a draft northern Ontario transportation plan. And twice during that time, these um, and I'm going to highlight why I have issue with it, is I'm very concerned about the bare snow removal within eight hours because of the fact that there's no plan, if you read the, of how it's going to be implemented. We currently in Northern Ontario, especially in Hornpain, I'm concerned that if they don't have the resources and people power to clear those Highway 11 and 17, that what's going to happen to our snowplow and our resources for our five for 631 or the other communities like Manitowage or Duberville and that sort of thing? That concerns me because there's no plan with this. And um, the other thing that concerns me is within this improvement of safety. Why aren't we going after cellular service? There should be cellular service across the north. So I'm, I, um, I would be of the option of saying we're in favor of the MPP seeking. Uh, that would be, I, or we just do a recorded vote. That's up to you, council. But I just think for Horn Pain, I'm very concerned that in the rollout of this. Yes, it sounds very. Uh, pleasing to think, oh, in eight hours, the snow is going to stop and all our highways are going to be cleared within eight hours of the snow stopping. I've lived here all my life in Northern Ontario, unless there is substantial infrastructure uh, or capital inputs put into our um, domes, where the domes are and where the plows are, that's not going to happen overnight. And that's my concern. That, that's my concerns about it. So I open it up for discussion. I know I've probably uh, jarred the thinking there a little bit because it seems like such a good, yeah, let's just do it. But the rollout of it, I am, I, I just, the other thing that I'm concerned about is we really need to start making Northern plans for Northern highways. We can't compare ourselves to 400 series highways. Like I, I would rather see a, a safer, I, I think a safer plan would be, needs to be formulated for the North. And I think the task force that's created might have some good ideas. So that's my thinking on this. So if there's any further questions or comments, I am gonna ask for a recorded vote on it. 
So I think Gail actually by, oh, go ahead. We have comments. <clears throat> Peter, go ahead. I think, uh, I think you make a lot of, uh, a couple of very strong valid points, Cheryl. But uh, I love the idea of any upgrade to the highway maintenance is, is good. Who's gonna pay for it? Where are we gonna get the manpower? Fly the sky dreams can never happen. Maybe we could build up to it over the course of four or five years, but a blatant blank coffee like that, no, it's just not possible. But I would love to see it happen. I just don't know how it's even possible. It's, I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, it, it would be very difficult to uh, succeed in something like this because we're lacking right now uh, all over Canada is manpower to operate this equipment. Build equipment, you just can't put people in the job. And this would be an increase of probably 40 to 50 percent. Where are you going to get the manpower? How is it going to get paid for? It's, uh, like I said, I think that's a great political statement that an honorable member keep you, nothing more than that. Hmm. Yeah. And another, I just thought of another, I uh, as you were talking, Peter, was that. We could be looking at further road closures if we don't, if the roads don't get cleaned within that eight hours, what happens at that time? Like, then we're, we're in a situation that I wouldn't want to see us in either. Uh, Councillor Kistemaker Belinda, go ahead. Um, my thing is, is that when they, when they are doing the roads and all that and doing the plowing and all that to do it right the first time. Because uh, I just noticed the last time I was around, I'm going to use Marathon as an example, was um, there was a huge difference on how they were doing around Marathon compared to how they were doing around Terrace Bay. And why is that? Why isn't it the same? Those kind of things, if they were doing it right the first time, maybe there would be less accidents. And why is there a difference? I don't understand, especially when you hear it's supposed to be the same people doing the plowing. That's so my thing inconsistencies there as well yeah 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 and my the other thing too that i it concerns me is that we're lumping in safety with all winter maintenance and where is the data for that that's that's my concern is because I'll, I'll give you what i thought when i was looking at, at this and i've thought about this lots over the last month or so is is there any correlation to where people are coming into cell service and the accidents is there any other correlations happening? And for me, something that's dear to me is when my children travel, we have checkpoints along the way that they text to ensure that they've made it so far because we have such gaps in cell service. And I and I know for myself, when I got the flat tire just outside um, on Highway 17 last summer, it's an unnerving experience for, for me by myself to have a flat tire and then you don't have cell service. There's nobody to call. So I like, I get that. I think there's multiple things going on and by putting all our funds and resources into one Avenue, I, I don't know if that's the best solution. So Councillor Stefanik, go ahead. Yeah, Mayor. I'm not sure if you know the history of private members bills. But historically speaking, not many have passed in province of Ontario where a private member presents the bill, number one. Number two, I doubt this ever will get to a third reading, in my opinion. Um, uh, I think maybe we'll nudge the government to look at it maybe closer, but I don't think they will. This, this will never become a reality, in my humble opinion. Okay. Any further comments on... Uh... On the motion. Okay, I am going to put it to a recorded vote. So, um, Gail, you'll have to record that. So, I'll let you take over. Uh, you're on mute, Gail. I'll start with Councillor Kistemaker, Belinda. I'll go with yes. So, oh, uh, uh, agree with it? Yeah. Okay. Councillor Peter Kistemaker. Uh, no, disagree. Okay. Councillor Stefanik. 
Agree. And Councillor Peroff. <laughs> I, I don't know. <clears throat> can I go in the middle somewhere? <laughs> it's not an option. Well, you can abstain. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Can I I should... abstain? <laughs> you can abstain, but an abstain count, abstention counts as a no. So essentially, you can't abstain. Yeah. Um, no, you can't abs you can't abstain, but it will be counted as a no vote. Uh, so the, the no vote says don't agree with this. Yeah. It would not be in support of Bill 59. I will not be in support, yes. So my that's correct. To myself, no. Oh, sorry, John. I thought you were still deliberating, but it's a no. Okay, sorry about that. And Mayor Ford's a no. Okay, thank you. I've got it all. Okay. So just uh, moving on from that, do I need to do anything with this resolution or are you going to add it to this one here, The what you wrote down? You can just check off on the bottom underneath where you normally sign. Yep. You can just check off. Okay, I'll let you fill it in. You have it there. Sure. Okay, so defeated. Okay, moving on to 10, just a second, I don't know if there is a 10.6, 10.6. Okay, the Federation of Northern Municipalities Conference Northern Leaders Debate Call for Debate Questions, and uh, I did want to highlight this too, that um, we have two representatives going from our community. Councillor Drago Stefanik and CAO Gail Jeremy. We were talking that uh, the deadline is April 29th, so we do have some time for this. Councillor Stefanik, go ahead. Yeah, three mayor, I'll have questions uh, post uh, the three mayor to the CAO within next week. Thank you. Okay. And then I open it up to Gil. How would you like to form this? I think it is quite important to have questions submitted, especially when we have representation there. It does highlight our community. Go ahead, Gil. Yeah, I'm just going to say if you can get your, um, I think the doesn't close till April, but if you can get your um, questions to me, even uh, nice and early would be nice, like even March 15th or something like that. Um, that would be great. And then I'll have time to compile them in a nice manner and get them into uh, to Phenom ahead of time. Okay, sounds good. Have Thanks. your questions into Gail by March 15th. And Gail, are you going to bring to council the questions that we posed, all of them that are going in or that sort of thing? Yeah, at sure. Meeting? sure. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Okay, if there's nothing on uh, further on that, we'll move on to 11. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Drago and Peter. Moved by Drago Spanish, second by Peter Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Horn Payne this year by acknowledge receipt of the correspondence information only package attached to the agenda of the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, February 9th, 2022. Any comments or um, highlights from the information only section? I have a few that I'd like uh, council to um, recognize is 11.2 budget considerations and consultations are open right now. I have put in um, a consultation on ambulance. I do have another one come going in on housing issues. Um, you can put anything in that you think needs to be looked at and there's a 500 word limit. It's very easy, it's just an email in. And for when I've been putting my consultations in, I just CC Gail on it so she has a copy of it. I, I'm a, if 
And uh, the other thing too, that's great to CC Gail on it is that we have that information. If we ever want to make a weighty resolution or something we refer to, like we put these comments in, we've been fighting for this. And if we don't do it, we don't have weight. So we need to get on board doing that. I want to highlight 11.9 that the Ontario launched a Northern Transportation Task Force. I think this is very important. I would encourage council to follow, follow along on this. And if you know any of the members, or if you'd like to meet any of the members, I know some of the members, I would be gladly to make introductions over email or that sort of thing for you. <clears throat> Uh, 11.10 Michael Mantha's uh, drive test at our mayor's meeting Mr. Mantha was there and um, he's been advocating on our behalf for several years to try and get um, a drive test center within Algoma and across the our whole region here so we're working together along with the mayor's group myself and Mr. Mantha we're going to put together all of the letters that um, he has submitted to the government and also all of the councils. I sent out an email, all the councils, and we're going to put a delegation request in to um, the Ontario Good Roads Association request that's due on March 11th. And um, I'll share with council once that is uh, through, through the mayor's group. Um, I have 1115 highlighted, Gail. Was that for your benefit? Yes, I just wanted to highlight that I forwarded that uh, opportunity for consultation on to the fire chief. So uh, any input I get back from him, I'll forward, uh, I'll submit, I'll, well, I'll likely submit it on his behalf. He doesn't uh, like to fiddle with administration stuff too much. So, but if anyone else has any comments they'd like to, um put forward please email those to me as well okay great thank you for that gail okay if that's uh no other comments or questions councillor kistemaker belinda did you have uh, i see your mics open i wasn't sure yeah go ahead i just like uh um to talk about the the two plant mm, i think i'm ahead of the game hold on no that's all right No, it's okay. Thank you. Oh, okay. If it comes back to you, you can interject. Okay, if there's no further discussion or comments on the information only section, I put that uh, acknowledge receipt motion to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, moving on to committee reports. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Drago, second by Peter. Moved by Drago Stefanik, second by Peter Kistemaker, be it resolved that the Council of Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby acknowledge receipt of the minutes from the Hornpain Public Library Board meeting, regular meeting held on Monday, December 6, 2021. Any discussion on the minutes? There being none, I put that to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, moving on to, uh, before we continue at this point, does uh, anyone need a break or we could have the break after section 13? I'm seeing, a go ahead, Councillor Stefanik. Yeah. Anytime you decide, but I need a break. My hip is starting to uh, harass oh. me a bit. And yeah, uh, let's, let's do that in. now. We'll take a ten-minute break, and we'll meet. Can uh, convene back at eight ten. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem.
needs the back. So we're at item 13.1. There's John, right on. And uh, the COVID-19 community update, Gail, take it away. Okay, thank you. So um, our CCG meetings are still being held bi-weekly. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank all the community members, or sorry, committee members for participating. I know that uh, particularly for the health unit and the hospital staff, it's, um, you know, difficult for them. They're juggling all sorts of uh, ministry meetings and all the rest of it. And they, one of them at least always makes time to come to our meetings. So I want to thank them for that. Um, and the uh, cases are still rising in the district. Um, and sadly, there have been several deaths over the last month, uh, which is unusual for us during this um, pandemic. There, there hasn't been, they hadn't been too frequent and now they seem to be coming uh, one or two, sometimes three a week. So that's, that's big for our area. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And of course, there's uh, pieces popping up in our community. Uh, as we already said, we are wishing these people well. Hope they don't get uh, too severe of symptoms. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, and remind, remind them again to follow the protocols and to um, be mindful of the capacity of our small hospital. Uh, the hospital is facing some uh, staff sort of shortages due to isolations and whatnot. I mean, people's children who work there, you know, play hockey or go to school. And is Gail frozen for everyone else? Yes, okay. I'm just going to send her a quick text. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. I turned off my um, camera because I saw you all froze, so I figured I was not being heard. So I'm not sure uh, where I stopped, where you stopped hearing me. Um, you were talking about the rising cases that the deaths had increased, and then you were starting on a new breath from there. Okay, so I'll just leave my camera off while I speak, just in case. Um, I just said there are cases popping up in our community, and, and of course, we're hoping everybody uh, doesn't get too serious of symptoms. Uh, reminding people again to follow the protocols and to keep be mindful of our the small capacity of our hospital um, because they are suffering staff shortages like the rest of us due to having to isolate, uh, not necessarily being ill, but um, they all have children in hockey and school as well. So we have to remember that, and it's not just. Um, concerning COVID cases or needing to go to the hospital because of illness from COVID. It could be heart attacks, broken legs, what whatnot. So I think we have to keep that in mind and try to be careful of <clears throat> what we're doing. Um, and then um, I had uh, been speaking to the health unit last week at our, uh, we have a, I have a bi-weekly meeting with them as well. And they were telling us about this um, video that came out from from the Ministry of Health. Uh, they've now shared that on our website, and we've shared it. <clears throat> excuse me, on ours, and it basically talks about the uh, the host rate of hospitalization and and um, kind of explains that it looks like there's um, a higher number. Well, there are a higher number of vaccinated people in the hospital than unvaccinated, but there are also um, more um, a higher percentage of vaccinated than not. So when you actually look at it, it shows uh, just the, the efficacy of the vaccine, really. And it's really interesting because it's a different perspective that I think you don't see when you just look at the stats by themselves. So I believe Mayor Fort shared that on her um, uh, Cheryl T. Fort page as well. So it's worth watching. Um, and then overall in Ontario, uh, it seems like the hospitalizations are seeming to decline uh, slowly. So that's a good sign. Um, so we'll have to keep hoping that that goes in the same direction. And I guess just a reminder to everyone again and everyone that you know, just I, I find that um, things are really getting to people these days. There's lack of patience. I'm, I'm suffering from that myself some days. Um, just too much for too long. 
um, you know, be kind, check in on your neighbors and your family members and uh, those who live alone. And um, we keep plugging away and we hope that this is the last big wave. So um, I think it's just important to try and try and keep things in a bit of perspective and hopefully we uh, will be out of this um, come spring or summer when we are more free to move around. So um, that's pretty much all I have. I'll just turn my camera back on and turn my mic off. Okay, thank you, Gail. And I just want to follow up. I did do a, I was away at work on Thursday and I usually have been doing the lives Friday for the community. And I had a, I was late coming home from work on Friday. So um, we did the live Tuesday at one o'clock and I did uh, strongly uh, reinforce that as COVID is circulating in our community, as the virus spreads in our community, that we can do things to minimize spread of virus just in general. Those protocols that are in place do minimize spread of disease. And I encourage no matter what um, avenue or take that you take on, whether you're in agreement or not with the vaccine or anything like that, at this time, it is critical for the health of the people in our community and for the um, health of our healthcare system so it stays intact that people all do their part to minimize the spread of the virus. So, and uh, I do follow up with what Gail said too about thanking the people that continually come to our community co control group meeting. It's been almost two years of regular meetings and um, we've had support from our hospital and the Porcupine Health. Unprecedented really. So, <clears throat> Okay, if there's no questions for Gail, we'll move on. Okay, 3.2, if I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Belinda and Drago. Moved by Belinda Kistemaker, second by Drago Stefanik, be it resolved that council does hereby acknowledge receipt of the road study report for the township of Horn Payne as prepared by Tullock Engineering. Any comments on the report or the motion? Councillor Stefanik, go ahead. Yeah, to the mayor, to the uh, CEO. May I have a hard copy of that report, please? I want to analyze more of the numbers, please. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I was quite surprised. The I, I'm not sure if um, the community would agree with the rating system of um, our road condition. <laughs> I was kind of surprised. I was um, all of our roads are in the 6.5 to 8.4 bracket. That's good structural condition. Some local improvement may need be needed. So. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Stefanik. That's exactly what I want to see the report. I want to make some copies, put a spreadsheet, my own spreadsheet. And I actually, just a preamble, I disagree with the report. Okay. I was just, I thought it was uh, interesting. But um, I, the one thing that did get me was the good structural condition. So I'm wondering if the structural condition outweighs the surface condition. I'm not sure. So. But anyway, that was my only comment on the report. Okay, if there's no further comments, I put it to a vote that we accept uh, acknowledge receipt of the report. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, moving on to 13.3. So we're talking about the GIS. Well, Councillor Perock, would you like to speak? You're on mute, Councillor Perock. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, so I did, you guys did read my letter. Um, because it is budget time and I realize that our, um, um, a renewal for JS from Wawa is coming due. And I thought it's quite expensive, I thought. And over the last number of years, I really, I don't think the township is getting its money's worth out of it. 
And I think we need to relook at it a little closer. And that was what stemmed out of this. Uh, since then, I, re, you know, I just today I just looked at the Wawa bylaw number, uh, whatever it is, it's attached. And it seems to cover a lot of things. And I don't think we're taking full advantage of, of what, what is available to us. And since this is budget time, I thought maybe this is somewhere we could look at. And is that all your comments, Councillor Prof? No, uh, for now, yeah, if there's any questions. I've uh, opened the floor to questions to Councillor Perroff. Councillor Stanek, go ahead. Yeah, Mayor. Yeah, if the if the cost is high, as you, I, I did not study it as you did. Uh, why can't we put this out for a tender, a general tender, to see if any other companies would be interested? If we're not getting a good bang for a buck, because uh, I remember staff very clearly saying that they don't have the expertise, number one, and also the people power to run their own system. I, I remember that very clearly. So that would be my concern. But I would I would have no hesitation to tender out uh, the process and to see if anybody else would be interested to provide better service for the monies that we're paying. I have no difficulty with that. Thank you, Councillor Stefanik. Any other comments from Council? I have uh, one question to the CAO. On this report, um, on this um, agreement that we're into, it expires at the end of this year correct? What was the plan moving forward? Did we have one? Was Were we in a GIS agreement previous to this agreement or is this the first time? Yeah, no, we've been in one with them since 2002 or 2004 when it was first, when the system was first put in. Okay. Um, and they basically just su provided support and, and Councillor Paris, right, we're, we don't take full advantage of it, but it's more or less because we don't have the capacity to do more than we're doing. Um, and then to Councillor Stefanik's point, uh, I don't know that you would get somebody to do the work for that amount, like for that little, because what they've done is they've hired somebody to do this work and split the cost between whatever it is, five communities or 10 communities or whatever it is, I'm not sure, um, which is why the rate is what it is. And I do agree, we're not getting the value for our money, um, but I don't know that we'd get a singular, um, entity to do it for cheaper other than doing it ourselves. Oh, and to answer your question, no, we haven't really uh, uh, thought about what, how to handle it or what to do. We just know we don't have the capacity internally right now to, to focus on it. Okay. <clears throat> Well, this is, I do agree with Councillor Peroff that this is the time if the agreement's coming due and we're not getting, if we're not um, benefiting from the services, either we have to make a consistent plan and make the provider accountable so that we have steps that these things get put in place within our community, or we go with a different proposal. So um, we did have a strategic planning meeting we've set aside already for items of this nature. We do have some time to plan ahead because we are, I'm assuming we would have some um, payouts if we were to cancel this contract. I don't know, we'd have to, I guess we'd have to ask them. Okay, okay. And it's not so much that they're not providing service, we're just, we don't have the, I mean, that when, when we ask for things, they're they're responded to, but we just don't have the time to gather the information to be input. Like it's, 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 I think it's six and one and a half a dozen of the other. I mean, it's not a good setup, admittedly, but uh, I just don't know what the answer is right now. So, I mean, uh, yeah, a discussion for brainstorming would be great. Yeah, I think we, I think we need to look at it because uh, Councillor Peroff offers a good solution, but then on the one hand, we still have to follow our procurement policy and that sort of thing and look at that and ensure that we're doing all that properly as well. 
So I'm not sure how much on that, uh, I believe, I know the date because I said I'd be there for it. Uh, May 25th, possibly for the strategic planning. And um, is that a regular council meeting? Are we gonna have extra time? It is a regular council. Well, it is a regular council meeting, but it's the second one of the month, so it's good to use for that type of thing. Okay. Okay. Councillor Parra, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Like uh, everybody's got a really good valid point on this one, and my point coming across here is we're paying almost nine thousand dollars a year to make a pretty map two or three times a year. So do we really need to do that? Or can we just pay for a little bit here and there? Yeah, I think that's, I think your your point's valid, but without all the other information of why we were put into the system, like I don't want to pull us out of a system if we were legislated and put in it. Sometimes we don't have a choice. So I, I want all that background. That's why I'd asked if we were just rolling over this contract I think it's great that you're bringing it up and it's come aware to you, John, because I do agree. I $9,000 isn't chump change to me at all or anything like that. Like I take it seriously. And, um, and I hope that wasn't a derogatory term that I just used. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize if it was, cause I don't know what it means, but, um, Anyway, I, I think that would be the appropriate place to put it is um, so that staff can have time to do the background work on it and then we can make an informed decision. And maybe if it's that, maybe that's where we go where it's piecemealed out. I'm not sure. Councillor Stefanik, go ahead. Just a real brief. Uh, if there was an opportunity through a grant structure to hire someone uh, for eight 12 month time period they could input all this information and that person be solely responsible and set the whole system up It'd be much easier for current staff to access the system so something to think about when you meet again hire somebody for that time through a grant procedure whatever possibility is out there yes okay does that seem uh, suitable? I, I don't think councils, uh, I don't think we're in a position right now to make a decision completely on it. Is that uh, suitable for yourself, Councillor Peroff? We put it there, let the staff do some background research for us on this contract. That's all I am asking for. Yes, that's a great idea. Okay, great. So we'll put that on with the, the planning meeting. Gail, do you need any more information from all any of us on guidance or from John himself? I don't think so. If I uh, when I get right down to it, if I need something else, I'll, I can call you, John. Yes. Okay. Uh, and I, uh, I've been around in this field for a while, so yes, I can answer your questions. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I'd like, uh, Gail, is just a little bit of history of. Um, why we originally got into the contract, that sort of thing, if it was linked to any legislation, and maybe that has changed, I don't know, or maybe increased. Okay. Okay, moving on to 13.4, setting a special meeting. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter. And Belinda. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby set a special meeting of Council on Wednesday, May 30th, 2022, in a virtual meeting room for the purposes outlined below. Presentation of 2021 financial statements. And uh, those in favor? And that is carried. None opposed. Okay, uh, 15 point, or sorry, 13.5 council committee updates. I'll open the floor and just go one by one by order on my cameras. Councillor Kistemaker, Peter, any updates? Oh, sorry, I have no updates at this time. No updates, thank you, sir. Councillor Peroff, any updates? Mm, no, 
not nothing major has happened uh, at my end either. Okay, thank you, Councillor Peroff. Councillor Stefanik, any updates? Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Real quick, uh, refer, in reference to Roma that Councillor Belinda and I attended and Gail, but my preamble is that the Gail prepared a superb document that could be not only used for that meeting, but particular meeting for all the meetings at, in the future. It's a superb report. Well done, Gail. Um, yeah, actually, it was a pleasure to meet with, I don't know how Belinda feels, but Minister Sarma, I, I felt she was very I mean, we, we received 19 minutes and 30, 30 seconds. So it was we were above time and she was very receptive to Gail to send more questions and she said even send to my office, which is really I think that was that was pretty classy act. Usually they brush you off and I, I really liked her. I, I truly did. I got good impression. And overall conference, I'm not repeat what Gail said. It was on housing, roads, opioid crisis, climate change, net zero emissions. And I agree with Gail. There's no comparison in person versus virtual. I'm not sure how Belinda feels, but that's that was my uh, that's the impression I got. Um, my meetings are full board for library board, P uh, PHU finance, PHU board. Um, and I also like to thank the public works. Uh, they did a superb job after two snowstorms previous two and a half months ago. Uh, great job. I, I think they, for the, uh, minimum staff, they're great. And I thank Jennifer again, the IT person. She helped me out again today. Technology doesn't like me and I dislike technology, but she came through again. And I thank you for that. That is all there. Thank you, Councillor Stanek. Councillor Christemaker, Belinda, any update? I'm fine. Okay, thank you. I just have one uh, further update. Um, I received a letter from Honorable Steve Clark, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, and they had a summit. I'm sure some of you heard about it on um, Rural Housing Affordability Roundtable. And the portal's open right now for any feedback at housingsupply at ontario.ca. And it uh, closes on February the 15th, 2022. And you're able to make comments on that. Uh, maybe what I'll do, Gail, is I can, uh, sh I, I may have forwarded this to you already, if we could share it with council so they can make comments if they like. And, uh, and I do think it's important, I can't reiterate enough that uh, if the, I haven't made count, uh, comments on this one yet, but uh, CC Gail, so we um, collect our comments together. And um, what else was there? Uh, we've had several meetings and I'm gonna leave talking about the announcements after, but uh, I've had several meetings over the course of the last, uh, even since the last council meeting, but. There's so much happening right now, and I've said this before in the past of really understanding the ebb and flow of municipal politics and how it runs along and when to put really big asks in and that sort of thing. And um, I saw this kind of coming ahead of time just because we had transitioned between uh, governments at one point. So, um, I'm not sure the best times to always have the best asks, but I think right now that if you put in considerations, except especially to the budget, that uh, there's some weight to those because they're looking for what um, could possibly, I would think, election platforms or that sort of thing. So let's get our voices heard for our community. And um, I really encourage you to put in comments. And that's all I have. Um, oh, sorry. I wanted to speak to the, the mayor's meeting. So Gail and I attended the mayor's meeting and um, uh, Mayor Bazzoni actually invite, um, brought up the rural revitalization at the meeting on his own. They had a presentation with their council. Wawa, it sounds like, may have a presentation with their council. And it seems like there's a lot of interest with, with that program. I do think it will put... Um, it'll be a groundbreaking program for Horn Payne because it's going to bring us into a new industry, which is knowledge industry. And if we can, like we heard with the presentation tonight, we saw the success of the food cycler program. We're a small community, but that doesn't mean that how many other small communities there are, that doesn't mean we can't be a leader in those things. And then you, and then you grow from that, you work together for solutions. So I was really uh, pleased that um, White River 
is, uh, it sounds like they're really bought into the rural revitalization plan with our um, RDN. So that uh, hopefully will come to fruition over the next year and our horn, uh, horn paint can be highlighted amongst the communities. So, um, and thank you to Gail and the staff in our community that worked with Deanne to really get that off the ground. You know, it takes some, it takes a lot of nurturing in the background sometimes to get those projects off the ground, but. So thank you, Gail. Okay, that's my update and moving on, we have uh, bylaws. So the first one is for our transfer payment for the municipal modernization program. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. John and Peter. Moved by John Peroff, second by Peter Kistemaker. Be it resolved that bylaw number 1907 being a bylaw to enter into a transfer payment agreement between the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain and Her Majesty the Queen in right of the province of Ontario, represented by the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing regarding the Municipal Modernization Program, MMP, MMP Intake 3. Review stream to complete a com to complete a comprehensive user fee study be hereby read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. And I put that to a vote, those in favor. And that is carried. Okay, moving on to 15.2. And this is a bylaw for the municipal, the modernization methods, the voting methods. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Oh, we lost somebody. John? Oh, there we go. Drago, we lost you for a minute. Were you gone very long? Drago, I had my head down. Oh, I was gone for about uh, 6.5 seconds. I froze in time. Oh, okay, okay. Just, uh, we're on uh, bylaw 15.2, the alternative voting methods bylaw. Uh, okay, John's thank you. And if I can get a seconder. You can't second it too, John, but thanks for your vote of confidence. If I can get a seconder, please, Belinda. Moved by John Peroff, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Be it resolved that bylaw number 1908 being a bylaw to authorize the use of alternative voting methods, telephone, internet, in the 2022 municipal election be hereby read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. Any discussion on the bylaw? I'll go ahead, Councillor Kistemaker, Peter. This is the one that we voted on the last time about the uh, telephone votes. Yeah. Yep, we already passed it, thought we would do it. We're just passing the bylaw now. Okay, if there's no discussion on the bylaw, I'll put that to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, moving on to 15.3. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Drago and Peter. Moved by Drago Stefanik, second by Peter Kistemaker. Be it resolved that bylaw number 1909 being a bylaw to regulate and govern all municipal cemeteries in the corporation of the Township of Hornpain pursuant to the Federal Burial and Cremation Services Act 2002, section 02002, C33, be hereby read a first and second time and considered read a third time and finally passed. <clears throat> Any discussion on the bylaw? Melissa, would you like to speak to it? 
Yeah, I just wanted to point out that the only changes that were made to the bylaw was um, formatting a little bit and changing. Um, uh, it, it said CAO treasurer, we changed that to CAO clerk and the amounts changed is just to the uh, cemetery care and maintenance uh, contribution amounts. So um, there are other things that can be changed for the pricing, but since we're gonna be doing that comprehensive user fee study, we'll uh, see what comes out of that before we go forth with changing the pricing for the municipal products and services. Okay, thank you for that Melissa. You're welcome. Any uh, questions or uh, comments on the bylaw? Okay, there being none, I put it to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, moving on to I have a com comprehensive user fee bylaw. Did I miss something? No, oh, that's the, um, we have to, if we're gonna change the pricing to the copying, we have to amend the bylaw. No, I'm on, I'm, Drago has to take over. <laughs> this is why I don't know about it because I didn't read it. <laughs> Okay, I um I'll just leave, Gail. You're gonna text me when I come back. Okay, and I'll hand sure. the meeting to Councillor Satana. Go ahead. Okay, I'm out. Of <clears throat> All right. Are we ready, Gail? Yep, all set. Any. Okay, uh, any discussion on the uh, bylaw that is presented in front of us, please? Go ahead, Melissa, please. Thank you. Um, so I, I left the colored copies, the amount that's uh, in question or up for discussion tonight blank based on in the schedule based on what uh, council's outcomes are going to be tonight. And I did get uh, three more responses from three other municipalities in regard to their copying fees. So the municipality of Killarney, their colored copy fees for legal and letter are 50 cents and uh, 11 by five, the tabloids are $1. Um, Red Lake is 50 cents for color and the township of Jolly, it's a dollar for colored copy any size. And I just wanted to point out that um, there are there were several municipalities who had um, indicated 25 cents, and that's the price based on uh, Amphibra requests for photocopy fees. And that's all Thank the added you. information I wanted to provide. Thank you very much, Melissa. Any You're members welcome. of council? Any members of council? Uh, please comment. So there's no, I see no comments. Uh, so Melissa, what would you recommend? I mean, there's tremendous amount of figures in there and many columns and uh, what's the bottom line coming from your uh, department? I would um, personally recommend that we don't go lower than the library. I think that it's crucial that the library receive the services rather than the municipality and the library is set at a dollar 30 for a photocopy. So if, Council would like to take that into consideration and there there's not too much cost to us like I highlighted it's 8.5 right. cents for a color copy and about two cents for a piece of paper so. Okay. And it, and it was um, set at a dollar 50 right. I believe I see that yes correct any members of Council wish to comment on the treasures. Um, Dollar thirty per minimum as a library. Huh. 
I, I personally would concur with the, the recommendation. Uh, uh, it, it's one of the, because I could speak on behalf of the library uh, as I'm on the board, it's one of the small revenue generation for us. And it does actually help if you look at it over a year's time, it does help us uh, as far as revenue. And the revenue outweighs the cost of producing those copies. And that's a fact. So I, for one, would go with $1.30 per copy. I'm, I'm not sure everybody else agrees on that issue. Go ahead, Melissa. The library also charges a dollar thirty for um, legal as well as letter. Yes. There's no difference in the size. Okay. Everybody can hear us. Uh, Council Perro, please. Yeah, I agree. I don't want to uh, undermine the library at all. I think uh, they're the ones that need the revenue more, and they're the ones set up for it. So. Right. Councilor Belinda or Councilor Peter. You're for it, okay. For it, okay. So there it is, Melissa. The the consensus is the total consensus by council to go with the dollar thirty per white sheet as well as a color sheet. Thank you. For for letter and legal. That is correct. For yes. both sizes, dollar thirty. Um, just one more uh, thing to uh, discuss: is there is there any is there going to be any um, provisions for um, retroactive pay for people that have already paid the higher price, or this is going to be in effect today. Um, may I have uh, input from council, please? If not, in effect we'll today. pardon me. In effect today. Okay, thank you. Agree. Uncur, we agree. Uh, Gail, please. Yeah, there was one other issue on that um, request that we got was they were looking for consideration for bulk price for copy. Mm -hmm. I see that, yeah. And as you can see from Melissa's um, research, only, well, one out of 22, I'm not sure about the other three that you just got in today, if they do bulk copying or not, but only one out of 22 offers a bulk copying price, so... Yeah, there was no mention about the bulk pricing. Okay. So what would be your recommendation, Melissa? We got, got, thank you, Gail. Appreciate that. Um, I overlooked that, to be honest. Um, what was, so what's your recommendation for the specific uh, bulk copy? Or would you want to handle it after? Or what is bulk? Is I, it 100 pages? Is it 200 pages? Like, where's the... Benchmark. I would personally rather um, send people to the library and then the library could make the determination if they want to offer bulk pricing or not. <laughs> I Gail, concur. Do you have any thoughts on that? I Sorry, were you talking to me? <laughs> yeah, I was, just, I was just saying that I would I would rather um, not not put bulk pricing in and then just send them to the library and if the library provides for that then they can make that determination. Yeah, I agree, and we do that now. Anyways, we we try to mm -hmm. pers not persuade, but we try to encourage people to use the library. Uh, and lots of times they will just come back and then go to the library or or just okay. go around and go to the library because it's it's really their revenue generating. Thing. We'll do it when people are stuck, basically. Mm -hmm. The rest of the council concur with that suggestion idea. Yes. All in agreement. Thank you. There's your go ahead, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So then you will, uh, we'll need to pass the. Um, the bylaw number 1910. So you just got there. You don't have the resolution in front of you, but under 15.4, you'll see just the short uh, resolution. Or I can read it out if you like. Please go ahead, Gail. Please do. Okay. Thank so you. we'll just need a, yep, we'll just need a, a mover and a seconder. So a mover. Mover. Pete, okay. Yep. And, and seconder, Belinda? Yes. 
Okay, sorry, I'm just going to dot that down. All right, so be it resolved that bylaw number 1910 being a bylaw to amend the comprehensive user fee and service charges be here read, sorry, be here by read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. All in favor? Oh, oh before sorry, that Carson. happens, Melissa has a comment. I just want I just want to make council aware that you're going to write in a dollar thirty in that schedule, but we're going to type it out and then make a fresh copy with no writing on it. Okay. If, so council's yeah. aware that that's going to happen after the fact. Okay. Council Belinda, go ahead. Thank you, Melissa. Council Belinda, no. Council Peter. Okay. All good. Okay. All, All in favor. favor. Opposed. Pass. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your work, Melissa. Okay, I'll just text uh, Mayor Fork here. My fingers are too big. Hello. Okay, so we're at uh, item number 16, motions, notice of motions. There's none, so 17. We have a few announcements tonight, and I want to start off by congratulating our client service manager, Treasurer. And I'm going to hand the mic over to Gail first, and then if Melissa wants to say any words. Yes, uh, thank you. I would just like to really, uh, I know I mentioned it in my last staff report, but I really want to uh, give Melissa credit. She has worked steadily since she's been hired to complete course after course after course and consistently gets 90s. She got 100 on one of them, that, at least that I'm aware of. Um, and that's all out of work time. It's not, it's not done at work. It's done on evenings and weekends and while she's trying to juggle budgets and audits and I don't know how she does it. I, I could never do it. Um, so congratulations, Melissa. I really admire your dedication and your, your will to uh, grow and improve. So well done. Thank you, Gail. Melissa, do you have any words? Do you want to talk about your struggles? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. I just want to th say thank you and thank you for your support and thank you to Mayor and Council for helping me out through, through all these times. Thanks to everybody. I appreciate everything. Good, good. Well, we appreciate it too here at Council. Thank you so much. And I'm, I'm thinking you're going to frame that and put that in your office or is it already? It is already. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Okay. Our second announcement is the mayor's availability. So I thought I should formally put in writing for council's benefit and our community and of course staff's benefit to understand what the next few months uh, may look like. And I couldn't really do this until after I received my um, CN vacation allotment. I had been waiting for that and we usually don't get it till the end of January and that's hence why this uh, announcement's coming now. So as you know, I am the Ontario PC candidate for Algoma Manitoulin. I will continue my duties as mayor right up until the 22nd of April and on the 23rd of April, I will start my vacation. That'll run right till June 2nd. I am talking um, with Gail right now about the strategic map planning meeting on the 25th of May. I would like to be um, here for that. Uh, the other item is on the April 13th meeting. 
although I'll still be doing my duties as council, I won't be at that meeting due to, uh, I'll be at the Ontario Good Roads Conference representing us there. So come the end of May, June 2nd is to be election day. So in the event that I am elected on June 2nd, I would resign as being mayor after, after they would find out. And um, it would be up to council to carry on and decide what they would do at that time. I do feel that we're in a strong position at town council and it is a municipal election year this year. And um, all of our decision, huge decision making should be done by then. But I do say there will be a lot of work for you with all the projects going on to help encouraging staff. And in the event that I'm not elected on June 2nd, I would continue as mayor for the rest of my term. Okay, so, and anyone can reach out to me if they have any questions. I hope that's clear. And if, uh, if there's any questions, please let me know. Yes, Gail, go ahead. So oh, I just want to say a couple of things. I wanted to congratulate you on your nomination and wish you luck. Although uh, if you win, it will be a big loss for the Township of Hornpain as far as the mayorship goes. I know that you would be representing in other ways, but I have to tell you today, today or yesterday, I can't even keep track of time anymore. But anyways, um, MPP Mike Mantha was in our office and he took me aside and he said, um, uh, he asked me what I thought about you running. And I said, um, I said, well, you know, it's going to be a big hit to the town if, if you know, if she gets in, but like, she, you know, she's, she does well and she speaks well. And she, if anyone can convince people to vote for her, it's going to be her. But anyway, he said to me, I have the utmost respect for her and I wish her luck. And I, and, and I just really have nothing bad to say about her. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm just really happy for her. So I thought I'd share that with you because I don't know if too many candidates would come out and say that about another can well, I shouldn't say he's a candidate, but I'm assuming that they would come out and say that. So I just wanted you to know that he said that. Thank you for that. Yes. Mike Beth and I have a good relationship. It's good. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Gail. Okay, so that's uh we'll move on to 17.3. So I'm gonna open up first with the Motion, if I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter. And John. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by John Peroff. Whereas council has been advised that the CAO clerk intends to retire at the end of this calendar year. And whereas council deems it necessary to provide ample time to identify the right candidate to fill the position and to complete the hiring process. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation, the Township of Hornpain, does hereby authorize and direct the CAO clerk to commence the recruitment process to fill the position of CAO clerk at the Township of Hornpain. And um, although I wrote uh, a piece, I wanted to ensure that all of my words, and I did reach out to Council in some council members may tonight uh, voice their um, congratulations as well. And I wanna say, Gail, it, uh, and I say this on behalf of your staff, I know that in all of council, that your hard work, your dedication, and your resilience has brought our community to a place where it is going to have a good foundation moving forward. And although it's, hard to say goodbye and I want you to have a great retirement at the same time I would probably convince you and try and convince you every day to extend it for a few years but and you know I have already when you first told me <laughs> but uh but I do know that you uh, work hard and you do deserve a really good long happy retirement so I am I am going to read a bit because I don't want to forget some of the key points I wanted to say and um, from your start here as an office clerk to your current role, and I remember way back then, I took over your duties as a treasurer for Grace United Church because you were getting so much more duties here. And all the way to the role as Chief Administrative Officer, Gail has been an incredible force for our municipality. The professionalism and personal excellence that you bring to your position as CAO shines through with your staff and with everyone that you represent both inside and outside the community. 
and I can attest to that at mayor's meetings, at delegations, at conferences, and I have said many times to other mayors and communities, don't you go fishing after our CAO. So, <laughs> and I and I wasn't like, I would give the stink eye to them. And uh, through your innovative ideas and ability to lead, Gail, you have significantly improved the efficiency and flow of staff and council. And when I'm um, looking back on this term of council and this time on council, I will re fondly remember the times that uh, you and I worked together and that we worked together as a team. I truly believe the Township of Horn Paint is a team with governments and administration. And, um, and I wish you well in your retirement. And thank you, Gail. Okay. If there's any further comments from council at this time, you can speak. Go ahead, Councillor Stefanik. Yeah, well said, Mayor. In my previous life, I did work with Gail. I'm not sure people know that. And uh, we were colleagues then, we're still colleagues. Uh, I'm gonna re reiterate what I said to me, to two meetings previous. This actually, I'm very, very, serious and uh, heartfelt from coming from me. Gail is a superb manager and a great motivator of staff. Two great character traits. You become a successful leader and she has both of them at 100%. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spanik. Okay, Gail, would you like to say a few comments? Well, first of all, I'm very humbled. <laughs> Thank you so much for all your comments and your support and your well wishes. Um, it's been, uh, I sound like I'm leaving tomorrow, I'm not, but it has been, really, it has been a pleasure. Uh, I enjoyed working with you all as well, and I will continue to do so. Um, I think that we've come a long way and we've done, we've, we've had a lot of successes in a short amount of time. Um, and for, for, you all know I didn't ever want this position um, and just sort of felt the need to take it at the time, but I, I do really enjoy it. I, I love it. I mean, there are times when it's overwhelming. There are times when it's frustrating, of course, and stressful, but really 95% of the time I, I do really enjoy it and I'm going to miss it. Um, but saying that, I think um, it never hurts to get in a new person with a new perspective and fresh ideas and just a new way of thinking. Um, so I look forward to finding someone who's hopefully very open-minded and outside of the box thinker. I'm not so much outside of the box. I rely on others on staff to do that for me, but, um, yeah, I look forward to really trying to find a real, a person who really wants to join the community, really wants to live in the North or could be in the North now and, um, who's going to, um, you know, just, sort of pick things up where they're left off and perhaps, you know, do greater things. Like it's uh, the world is the oyster if you've got the, the right attitude, right? So anyway, thank you all. Thank you, Gail. Okay, it's probably our most bittersweet motion that I'm going to put to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, it's time for our closed session. So if I, just before we go into closed, if I can get a mover and a seconder for that resolution, please. Drago and Belinda. Moved by Drago Stefanik, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Be it resolved at the next portion of the meeting at 9.05 p.m. Be closed to the public in order to discuss a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board pursuant of section 239-2C of the Municipal Act 2001. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, you have another meeting link. We'll meet on there.
Moved by Belinda Kissmaker, second by Drago Stefanik. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Cornfane does return to open council at 9.29 p.m. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, we have one uh, motion coming out of our closed session. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Peter and Belinda. Moved by Peter Kistemaker, second by Belinda Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Horn Payne declines the offer to purchase for the township owned properties currently known as 150 Marathon Road, roll number 5796-000050890000. Legal description RPAR120, part two, parcel 4787AWS for the price of $500 and 11 Honka Drive, roll number 5797-000-005-10300-0000. Legal description, plan M68, lot 69, parcel 5222AWS for the price of $500, $300, sorry. Those in favor? And that is carried. And we're moving near the end of our meeting council. If I can get a mover and a seconder for the confirmatory bylaw, please. Belinda and Peter. Moved by Belinda Kissmaker, second by Peter Kissmaker. Here is the bylaw number 1911 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council. <coughs> Regular meeting held on Wednesday, February 9th, 2022. Be hereby read a first and second time. Be considered read a third time and finally passed. Those in favor? And that is carried. And our adjournment, if I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Drago and John. Moved by Drago Stanek, second by John Peroff. Be it resolved that council does hereby adjourn this regular meeting of council held on Wednesday, February 9th, 2022 at 9.31 p.m. Those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you. We got through a lot of stuff. Have a great night, everyone. You too. Good night, everyone.